I'm not a fan of destiny. Oh my god. Wait, what timeline am I in? Is he about to defend my, what I said? I mean, this is insane, Piers. There's one side that is inciting violence, praising violence, mocking yes. violence. Yes. You have no problem with them. Yes. Instead, you obsess over journalists yes. reporting accurately. Yes. Actually, I heard the president Hitler and praised him. Donald Trump was. Sh oh my god. Like this, every single time something bad happens, that's what conservatives want. They want you to beg for forgiveness and pretend like you were the cause of the problem. Tim Pool played this game. It can't be the shooter's fault. It can't be conservatives' fault. It has to be gay people's fault for being gay, right? Where does rhetoric like this get you, right? But after the shooting, who's supposed to beg for forgiveness? It has to be gay people have to get down and beg for forgiveness. We're so sorry for being gay. These people will say shit like this, and then when an event happens, they go, liberals, you need to apologize. Fuck that. That's such a clear and concise question. It's a kill shot question. We finish an answer, Piers. <laughs> you take January 6th, you attribute that to Donald Trump, who asked people to make their voices heard peacefully and patriotically. That, he didn't ask, actually say that. Oh, we're gonna go over so much for this. I am putting together, I am doing this. This is my, this is my cross. And then I'm done with US politics, okay? Cause f this, okay? Everybody in this country should know the coup thing, okay? I'm convinced that like, almost nobody knows it. That's unbelievable to me, all right? That's the first pillar, number one, all right? Number two, people need to understand that Donald Trump has eluded an ungodly amount of accountability. And they need to answer for why did he pardon the people that he pardoned around him? There are a few that I really want to focus on. One of them is absolutely Paul Manafort. That was an insane pardon. That was an insane pardon. Okay. Um, and then the third one, I want to know, I need to look this up also to double check to see if all of them have made public statements about it. I don't believe that a single prior cabinet member um, from Trump's administration is supporting him. Pence isn't. Like, <clears throat> These, these are the three things that I want to focus on. These are the things that I want to focus on. I don't know, the, I, I want to say, uh, I don't know if it was every single camera member. That's when I want to look it up. I want to look up every single one and find the uh, statements. Yeah. Are you going to talk to Asmongold? Uh, no, I cannot talk to anybody that is streaming on Twitch. Uh, Hassan and the CEO or Hassan and moderation are in collusion to make sure that he has exclusive access to that political audience so that he has no competition. Um, so I have no access to anybody on Twitch. I can't talk because since I'm a banned streamer, there's no way that I can speak to anybody on that platform while they're streaming. So I lose access to that entire audience. Um, somebody said, what's the confidence interval on the Twitch collusion? Oh, on that stuff? Well, I mean, yeah, I would look really silly if I said something like that and then you know, somebody came out and just absolutely denied it. That would make me look pretty silly. So I'm very glad that he did not die on Saturday. You know, I interviewed Destiny yesterday. He has a big following online. And I tried to get him just to condemn what this shooter attempted to do. And this is what he said. I'm asking you to condemn what happened as an egregious attack on, a do on democracy. Can you do that? No, I won't. No, I won't. I won't. You can't do that. See, so why the hell? Yes, yeah, frankly, not. Destiny. Absolutely not. Why absolutely the not. hell? Not in front of these f***ing clowns. Absolutely not. Did we listen absolutely to a not. word you have to say? I found that pretty, pretty startling, actually, and uh, very indicative of what I've sensed about politics in America, in Britain, in other countries. Oh, yeah? Why? Who's leading the charge? As well. Um, that since the advent of social media in particular, fueling this kind of talk. Was him deleting positive comments true? Well, firstly, it's not, um... <laughs> Bro, I love this meme so much. Uh, it's not him personally doing it. They, maybe there's a reason why they delete certain comments. Maybe they want it to go in a certain direction. Although there were a lot of people on my separate at posting that they would post multiple comments and the negative ones would stay and the positive ones would get deleted. Maybe all of those are bots posting too. I don't know. You got demonetized from Twitter and banned from Kick. Did you learn your lesson and stop being a meanie to me? Since the advent of social media in particular, fueling this kind of toxic tribal nature of discourse, if you can't condemn a 20-year-old with an AR-15 trying to blow the brains out of a president, whoever it is, whichever side that president comes from. Um, in the same way, and I'm not going to go over this with you today because I want to stick on to the, the Trump story, but it's why I always ask people in the Israel-Hamas war debate, 
did you condemn what happened on October the, the 7th? Because frankly, it's quite illuminating if people can't condemn horror when they see it. I'm not comparing the two and I don't want you to respond to that part of it. But what I do want to just get your reaction to is, do, do you share my... Has there been any communication with Kicks or other venue? Yeah, I had a conversation last night with our moderation team and they said that me saying fuck that dude or whatever counts as supporting terrorism. I'm like, okay. Discomfort that people have got so entrenched into their side now, so entrenched that they just simply can't see the wood for the trees and, and say something which is vaguely humane. Look, that is a very fair point. I'm not a fan of destiny. Oh my God. Wait, what timeline am I in? Is he about to defend? Is he about to defend my, what I said? He absolutely is. If you're going to say something to somebody, don't say something and then but and then say it because whatever you say, everything that comes before the but is meaningless. The person will ignore it. And it is. It doesn't mean anything, right? That's how, always how it works. Okay. I just paused. He's about to like, I'm not a big fan of Destiny, but this is actually worse than even I would expect from him. He's about to shit on me hardcore and I just paused it way too early. But <laughs> look, that is a very fair point. I'm not a fan of Destiny, but let me just put some of what he was saying in context mm -hmm. because I watched that discussion. I think the point he was trying to make, and I think he did it badly, uh, is... Oh, shit. Oh, he's trying to back away from my optics, but he's about to agree with me. I'll take it. I don't give a f If you don't want the optics, that's fine. However, be careful with this argument, okay? It's a dangerous one. But the optics are the only reason any of these people even talking about this right now, okay? Just to be clear, all right? Because if, because if the attempted assassination happens and I go on Twitter and I go, actually, I think that part of the reason why is because the conservatives, hold on, to be clear, I absolutely condemn the shooting. I absolutely, my deepest sympathies to the family. But I think conservatives aren't kind of mean. Um, and I think that might've played a bit into it. Right? Nobody would give a f just to say, okay? Is that there is a double standard here. That as with the Palestine-Israel debate, where you tend to only ask Palestinians to condemn and not Israelis, uh, journalists, not just yourself, tend to obsess over liberals condemning stuff while conservatives get True! Hello. Hello. Pass. And I think that is what bothers a lot of people. It certainly bothers me. And, you know, you mentioned condemning violence, Piers. Uh, on Monday's show, you had Ben Shapiro on. Uh, I think oh, and he's got the background. True. Bring it up. I wanted to, oh, I should have. I didn't want to interrupt the show because I, because I think Jenk had to leave soon. Um, but I wanted, I wanted to slurp on Jenk when he was roasting Piers Morgan. He was roasting him and Jenk was absolutely correct in those first two minutes. And I wanted to, oh, I wanted to back him up, but he, but he had to leave soon. So I didn't want to like interrupt any of the limited talking time he had. Condemning violence, Piers. Uh, on Monday's show, you had Ben Shapiro on. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you had Dan, uh, uh, the Texas congressman, Dan yeah. Crenshaw on. And you had Rudy Giuliani on, right? All three of them have at some point glorified violence, embraced violence, incited violence. Dan Crenshaw's put out videos where he's blowing stuff up, beating up left-wingers. Rudy Giuliani, as you know, Piers, on January the 6th, told an armed mob mm. uh, to do trial by combat. Uh, ben Shapiro had to deny any influence on the Quebec City mosque shooter who killed six Muslims in January 2017. Ben Shapiro called Obama a fascist. You didn't ask any of those three people to condemn their own past. So that's, I think, what bothers destiny. Oh, my God. The big... True. It is the big true. It is the big true. Yes. Certainly bothers me. We have one party in this country, one movement that's been inciting violence for years. That's yes. the Republican Party and the conservative movement. And yet one... Although, wait a second. When he says in this country... Hold on, wait. Is he American? Is he, does he, is he like an expat? Did he move here? Or are these just two British people who live in Britain who are talking about American politics? <laughs> I'm just trying to tell. Does, he, does anybody know? Did, does many live in the United States? I think he lives there. No, okay, so they do. So when he says this country, they're just... I mean, I've done it sometimes for Israel, I guess, yeah. Bullet is fired by a... Reg oh, no, wait. He moved to America. He's British-American. Oh, Destiny okay. certainly bothers me. Your social and political commentary has been great. Keep up the good work. With respect to justifying Trump's pardons, how would you respond to Trump's supporters who say it's because they were victims of hoaxes and unfair investigations? That's why I would focus on some and not the others. So, for instance, that's why I didn't say uh, Michael Flynn. From what I read of the documents, and we did go over those with Rob... Um, Flynn looked like he lied to the FBI. Seemed like he knowingly lied to the FBI over, was it Kislyak? Is that the Russian he was talking to? <sighs> if we have time, we do have time before the election. We might read over every single part of that Mueller indictment as well. Because when people say, <sighs> let me, 
Let me just drop this here, and we will we will read these. Actually, if I'm going to read anything, why the fuck would we not read these documents? Okay, when people talk about Russia Gate, what they make it sound like is there was a whole bunch of baseless accusations against Trump's campaign, and people started to see Russian connections. Okay, where there were none. All right. So here's Trump. Here's the people around him. Okay, and people pretend that Russia Gate was seeing all of these weird connections of like all these people that were connected to Russia in like the weirdest fucking ways. And when Mueller came in and did the actual investigation and we saw, what we actually saw was this. There was nothing, okay? There was absolutely nothing. It, it was all bullshit. But that's not true. What he found was basically like, this, it was really weird. There was a lot of really weird shit with communication with Russian people. Um, the Stone and Guccifer coordination shit, um, the, <clears throat> the meeting in the Trump Tower, there was a lot of weird, weird, weird shit, okay? Such that if you're gonna say that Hunter Biden needs an investigation for Burisma or whatever the f delusional shit that people have concocted there, you absolutely should have wanted Donald Trump to be investigated here. Um, but we'll get, we'll, you know what, we'll get into all that. We have one party in this country, one movement that's been inciting violence for years. That's the Republican Party and the conservative movement. And yet one bullet is fired by a re registered Republican voter on Saturday. And suddenly it's the liberals must condemn Democrats. Joe Biden sitting on TV True. mumbling defensively. I True. Shouldn't have said this, it's a Let me be clear, though. Let me be clear. Let me be clear. Biden probably should have. I don't think that Biden, I don't think that the president of the United States should say anything beyond an explicit and express condemnation of that attack, because this is the president of the United States. I don't, I don't want a president who's even remotely veering off into territory where he is even having the appearance of condoning a terrorist attack. He can't, he shouldn't be doing that as the president of the United States, okay? Um, that's not his job. That's not what I want him to do. And that would be, it, it runs the risk of doing irreparable harm to, um, to, to the country, yeah. Joe, come on, Piers, you know and I know that the political violence in this country is coming from the right, the incitement's coming from the right. Donald Trump has embraced violence more than any other okay. political okay, let me, let me in respond. my lifetime. Let me respond to that. I, I, look, Please. in relation to things like January the 6th, my record speaks for itself. I wrote a number of pretty... There's a really good quote, and I, I wanted to say it, but I, but I kept getting cut off so much, and I didn't have time to lay out any of my arguments, which was really frustrating. Um, this ain't about you. This ain't about you. John Stewart says it when he interviews Kramer, and it's such a, and it's, it exactly fits here one to one. There's a part in this interview where John Stewart brings on Kramer and he, he annihilates him. It's one of the most destru it's one of the things that makes me hate John Stewart the most, and it is one of the things that makes me respect him the most. I respect him because it's a really well done interview. He pulls no punches, and I hate him because I can see a flash of, um, if you were a journalist, you could be doing such great work. But maybe it was because he wasn't a journalist that he, that, he, um, that he had the flexibility or freedom to do this. Regardless, at some point in, this, at some point in the interview, Kramer's like, I, well, I do do this now. Like, I, I call these people out and I do this. And Jon Stewart says, that's great, but this ain't about you, right? It's about everything else. And every time Pierce does this thing where he's like, well, I condemn this, and I, that's fine. This isn't about you, okay? You're not part of the problem that we're talking about. I, I look Please. in relation to things like January the sixth. My record speaks for itself. I wrote a number of pretty blistering columns about how appalling I found that, and what a shocking attack on democracy it was, and how shameful Trump's rhetoric was on the day to to fuel. Also, yeah, I don't want to. Okay, I, I'm trying to be careful, okay, because I'm I'm also learning that conservatives wield way more power online and to do personal damage than I was aware of. Okay, way more than the Muslim people. Damn, Muslims are cucked um, compared to these conservative people. How in the fuck? This is inexplicable to me. And I really didn't know the extent of this account. How the fuck does that Libs of TikTok account survive on Twitter? What the fuck? I thought that Libs of TikTok, I, I thought that it went over like, um, like TikTok. I thought it went over other people's TikTok videos and then posted it and then sometimes people would dox me shit. I didn't know that Libs of TikTok would just repost videos of like ordinary people being filmed and then find their full docs and then post it online. And then that's like, cool. That's, it's, it's, it's um, uh, condoned. Is that what I'm looking for? It's like officially condoned doxing. There's another word I'm looking for. 
it feels like it's just like the official doxing arm of Twitter. Like you just, you go to Libs or TikTok, you say, who do we dox today? Who do we email? Whose life do we destroy? Sanctioned, ah, uh, yeah. Twitter sanctioned doxing. The mob uh, make no pretense of that whatsoever. Um, on this particular occasion, I wanted to have a conversation about what happened to Donald Trump last weekend. One of the things that I would counter what you've just said with is, you know, this idea that somehow the left have been completely blamed. And just to remind people, I'm not on the right. I'm not a conservative, never have been, right? I mean, I voted for Margaret Thatcher when I was about 18. Um, I don't like, I, I genuinely do believe this, okay? I, there are different flavors of these centrists, okay? I don't think, I, I see Josiah in chat getting upset, and maybe I've missed something, so I could be wrong, but I don't think that Piers Morgan is genuinely like a conservative. I don't think he is. I think he is kind of like centristy, and he will attack both sides. But the only problem is, um, the only problem is, is when he attacks both sides, there's two issues. One, he makes both sides seem equivalent in every complaint, and two, he, in a way, he kind of throws his hat in the ring with every other centrist who is a hardcore conservative. So like Tim Pool is a hardcore Trump supporter. I don't know if I should do, maybe neo-neo-conservative? What would you call it? What's like the new, new conservative? What do you call like a Trump supporter? Is there, is there an official political term for them now? Destiny, is he illiberal? Why is he so supportive of Trump? I don't think Piers Morgan does support Trump. I don't think so. We could call him dark cons, a dark con. <laughs> I don't like right-wing populists because too many people have a positive connotation with populist. And I don't like right-wing fascists because the lefties have driven that into the dirt. Let's talk Piers Morgan real quick, just real quick on the bias thing. Mm -hmm. You know the guy, or at least you've, you've met him, you know him much more than me, but- well, I haven't met him. I don't know how much- Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know how much you consume his content, but- Not that much. This is what I would, well, this is what I would say. So he, mm -hmm. he has a personal friendship with Donald Trump. He was on The Celebrity Apprentice. They were friends for years. Um, then after the 2020 election, Pierce started to criticize Trump and about not conceding in January 6th. So do I think Pierce is a Trump supporter? Yes, in the sense that if he were an eligible voter in the United States, I would bet you $1,000 that he would vote for Trump. There's oh, no you really think Trump. so? Yes, huh. yes. But obviously we can't do that because he's, he's yeah. British. He, well, he's I'm curious, what makes you think that? So not just because he repeatedly refers to his friendship of Trump and how he says that Trump was a good president. And he has said Wait, that. Wait, he has said that? Trump. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I'll find you some of the clips. I think he's even said it. Um, I think he's even said it in conversations where you've been on, where he's like, you know, if you take away all the rhetoric, you know, Trump had a pretty good record as president. He was kind of moderate, you know. So he grades Trump on a curve. If you look at his Trump topics. Wait, I'm so to confused. The, that, okay, that was a decent British accent, but it wasn't his British Thank accent. You. Whose British accent was that? What am I thinking okay, of? That was, that, was Dick, that was Dick Van Dyke. I can't oh, do whatever. I can't whatever do whatever one whatever okay, Yeah, okay. exactly. Then it goes off into like Australian or something like that. Okay, so, okay. Um, okay, yeah. maybe he has said that. Yeah, I, I He probably has said things. He was like, well, at least the economy was good under Trump or something like that, maybe. Sure, yeah, okay. Yeah, so, so he says that Trump was a good president if you divorce the rhetoric. If you look at any of his domestic political topics... If it involves Trump, it's incessantly pro-Trump, anti-Biden. And even look at the configurations of people he has on. So he'll have you on and then have you outnumbered two to one, three to one, and then he'll jump in himself. Mm -hmm. So to me, and, and Mehdi calls him on this later on in this conversation, which is why I don't want to waste too much time because I really want you to watch this whole thing. But even Mehdi brings the receipts. When Pierce talks about Trump, it is always pro-Trump, anti-Biden. Uh, he stacks the deck in ways where the liberal or pro-Biden guest is outnumbered, even when he has people on who are, like, supposed to be liberal or progressive. They're anti-Biden. So think about Jen Uger. He constantly brings Jen No, that's on. true. Or the, yep. didn't they do the one, I didn't actually watch this, but w when they were trying to have a discussion about Biden's performance, didn't they bring on four people? It was like two conservatives and then two left-leaning people, but it they was like Hassan. They brought on Crystal Ball. And Bro, they brought on Crystal Ball and Hassan. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. That. yeah, yeah, yeah. People yeah. that hate yeah. Biden. Of course. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Had, okay. Follow me for one second. Okay. Sure. I can't. Okay. I have to be so careful. I really, I really, really, really do have to be careful. I keep saying this like a meme, but it's not. And it can slide into sure. non meme territory where I'm, a, where I'm actually making myself crazy. Okay. Sure. Why? Why what? Why? Did I lose you? Yeah, no. Uh, why, um, why, why is it slanted that way? I, is it, my question is, is, is it like a series of decisions that can easily be explained by an individual's personal biases, and then the biases that trickle down to the network? Or is there something else like that's like putting its thumb on the scale of the background? So 
for my money, I think with Pierce specifically, a lot of it owes to, again, a personal friendship with Trump and also just, I, I think, I mean, he's a, he's a very clever guy, right? So he, I think he understands that there is an appetite in the market, particularly in, in alternate media for, um, you know, anti-SJW, um, you know, that, that the, the, the lingering effects of that sort of meta, I think also speak to him because when he was, um, before he did Piers Morgan Uncensored, he was on CNN briefly. He was on he was a Fox News contributor, and then he was on like Good Morning Britain or something like that, where he was like a morning talk show host. Mm -hmm. And then he got fired for some like anti-trans rhetoric. So I think it's a mix of personal beliefs, backlash that he's experienced directly in his career, um, and also just like close association with people. He's good friends with Jordan Peterson. He's close to Ben Shapiro, and it's profitable. I think he's got one of the fastest growing YouTube channels, particularly in this space. Like. Your video with him is like, I, th I think it's like at 2 million views already. The one he did before with Luke the day before is like 2 to 3 million at this point. So it's just enormously profitable. And then the media landscape, I, I, if, you, if you really think about American media in particular, you know, you have Fox News, OAN, and Newsmax. They mm -hmm. are ideologically predisposed uh, towards the right, and they have found a way to monetize it. So their ideology and their financial interests are like helixed. Then if you look at the so-called mainstream media, yes, I have no doubt that Jake Tapper and people at the New York Times probably vote for Democrats instead of Republicans. But John Stewart said it 10 years ago in an interview with Chris Wallace, which I'll link you to, you should watch that too, because he made some really good points. He's like, right-wing media is ideologically biased and they profited off of it, it's monetized. Yeah. Mainstream media has a bias towards sensationalism and laziness. So even though the reporters themselves may vote Democrat, if you know, talking shit about a Democrat, be it Anthony Weiner, which is the example that John Stewart provided because it was in like 2011 or 2012, or Joe Biden and Joe Biden's cognitive decline, mm -hmm. that shit generates clicks. And so they will gleefully sacrifice ideology for the sake of clicks. And Trump, I think, is enormously beneficial towards the media because covering him generates so much like traffic. So I, I think, I think in some cases it is personal ideological bias, and I think in other cases it's just. Have you? Did you see? Yeah. Did you see the people on my subreddit and a lot of people on my chat are posting um, that if you leave a positive comment about me and a negative comment about me on the uh, YouTube video, that the positive comments are deleted. <laughs> Did you see people posting that? I I, I didn't see the th oh, I didn't look at the threads, but I saw the uh, I saw the titles. Yeah, where where that's been going on. Um, some people were. I really before I full schizo. Um, I should be trying to like do tests and verify it myself, but there were people that were posting imagers of them leaving like multiple comments. Mm -hmm. uh, like I made two comments, one praising D, the other saying is insane in that order. The positive comment is not in my comment history and the negative one is. I feel like, I think there were people that were posting images where, am I making this up? Hold on. Where they could look through their history and they would see that like the negative comment was still there, but the positive one was deleted. Wait, why? Why would that be the case? Where is this? Am I, hold on. Make sure I'm not going schizo. You might be. Was this one of them? My comments are all still up. Well, this was four hours ago. Well, this guy's comments are saying he's still up. I posted a comment where I negatively appeared at the beginning of the video. No mention of Dusty. My comment is still up too, but it also has zero thumbs. It could also just be a lot of comments get randomly deleted too. That's why I'm saying I have to be careful not to schizo trap myself. I thought I saw imager links. Am I going crazy? Maybe they're in the nested comments somewhere, but Destiny, this is one. Oh, wait, this, I remember seeing this, yeah. <clears throat> this was 22 hours ago. So Pierce refuses to acknowledge how the rhetoric of the right, blah, 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 and then return error because this comment is gone. Oh, this is another one that was deleted, I think. Destiny did a great job pushing back, returned error. It's probably in the nested comments. Um, okay, wait, did you have anything else you want to say that? Because then I have a, I've got a- No, uh, no, that I've was a, a I, schizo, I think it's, a schizo, the no, final think, schizo question, okay? Yeah, go ahead. Oh wait, this guy posted a video about it, hold on. I have a very big schizo question. This might be the key to everything, okay? Wait, there's no way this is real. This might be the key. This is the key schizo question. Okay, are you ready? Sure. Wait, this is a minute video, I'm just... Okay, he posts two comments. This guy's guy so annoying, how can you like him? Never have one again. Dusty did an amazing job at stopping the gaslighting coming from these conservatives. You should invite him on as much as you can. Maybe, 
you have to rule out other things. Maybe he's using a keyword that's like getting it um, auto nuked. Like maybe gaslighting gets you auto. Okay, he refreshes. That would also be tragic and so sad. You wouldn't think I and then one comment is gone. You guys should try stuff like this, okay? I don't want to sit here and try. Oh, gee, no shot. I don't want to sit here and say that like this is happening for sure because there's a lot of different things that can happen on the back end for technology that causes like random comments get deleted. You, you, sh you guys should. You should try this and like post results sometimes. I'm so curious. That's so weird. Um, okay. Or maybe, yeah, or maybe he got caught in a spam filter because he posted two comments in a row. So maybe the second one got posted too quickly. So it was like rate limited kind of. I don't know if you call that rate limit. Um, okay. Hold on. Ready? Sure. Why, after Elon Musk bought Twitter, okay, why didn't Donald Trump go back to Twitter? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, so it, I remember at the time, you may you may want to fact check me on this, but I could have swore there was something in the contract for Truth Social about like an exclusivity thing where maybe I'm making this up. I don't think I am, though. There was something in the contract where Trump really needed to stay away from other social media exclusivity. Oh, wait, for that Truth Social company. Do you think that he is... No, no, hold on. I'm sorry. None of that makes no, let, sense. Let me, let no, me no, no, no. This up. I understand what you're saying, but even if you show me an article and everything that you show me is true, it still doesn't make sense. Because if you were running for the president of the United States and the difference between whether or not you won or lost could be dictated on your social media presence, do you think that a few million dollars from some social media app that like a fraction of Americans use is going to keep you off of Twitter? Yeah, so, okay, I don't know. I, all I know is I just, I did a quick Google search and there was an exclusivity deal with Truth, so Truth Social uh, to which Trump himself was subject. But yeah, I mean, maybe he would have just, you know, taken the penalty and, and for the sake of the greater exposure. I mean, he also reportedly had enormous contempt for Elon Musk. Did you, did you ever hear like the shit that Musk talked, or excuse me, that Trump talked about Musk, like something about how he begged me like a dog for, you know, contracts and benefits when I was president, like, publicly talk shit about Musk for months. Uh, so maybe personal animus too. I don't know, because to your point, obviously True Social gets a fraction, I imagine, of the, the traffic that Twitter does. So you would think that it would be just more rational for Trump to go back, but he still hasn't. He has, he has like a, um, an account, which is like Donald Trump's Truth Social post, which just mm -hmm. basically copies and pastes everything on Trump's behalf, but it's not at real Donald Trump. Sure, I yeah, know. I just, I don't understand why he wouldn't be on there posting again. It's a good question. And that may change now that, I don't know if you know this, but Musk has committed $45 million a month to Trump's campaign. Well, what does that mean? It can't be that, right? It's got to be the super PAC, no? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because I think it's like a $3,300 like personal, yeah. um, personal like uh, cap. So yeah, he's, he's committed to donating $45 million a month through super PACs. You should definitely, you watch this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dip out so you can continue, but uh, it's, it's really good. And Wait, watch what? Mitty the Piers makes, Morgan thing? Yeah, with, oh, with what Medi said. Yeah, okay. it keeps going on. I'm telling you, it's, it's worth it. So I'm going to dip and I may pop back in later. Good luck. Okay, love you. Let Why do you think he's not on Twitter? I don't know. I have no idea. I truly don't know. Doesn't him going back on X hurt the narrative of the Silicon Valley? I should have us out to get him. I don't know. I don't know. I, tr I truly don't understand. I don't even understand. But I've also voted for Tony Blair and I've voted for, you know, left wing leaders before. And I ran a Daily Mirror, which, as you know, was a left leaning newspaper in Britain for 10 years. So this idea that I'm on the right, as some people try and paint me, um, is for the birds. However, what I try and do is be fair minded about the culpability of both sides. And I'll return no. the favour by criticising you, because one of my big bugbears here has been the persistent analogies and comparisons of Donald Trump to Adolf Hitler. And I want to play two <laughs> clips of two clips of you. Readers say that this uh -oh. is approaching sort of a fascist. We've got a bong off. <laughs> sort of well, ideology. Well, as you say, it's not just approaching, we're beyond it, right? Yes! I was saying, I was saying on this... Wait, let me grab my... Network in 2020, I was saying in my writing in 2019, this is authoritarianism, this is fascism. People have to calm the hell down. Everyone used to cite a guy called Robert Paxton, who's one of this country's leading historians of fascism. And he would say, Trump's not a fascist. He doesn't meet the definition of fascism. Guess what he said on January the 6th? Right. I was wrong. He's a fascist. Okay. Even Robert Paxton comes out and says, he's a fascist, right? He's got armed militias. He's inciting violence. Now he's straight up channeling Adolf Hitler. Trump isn't hiding his authoritarian ambitions for a second term. From punishing his political opponents to locking up immigrants in camps to deploying the military. 
all while echoing the hateful rhetoric of Adolf Hitler. Now, I also want to play you a mashup of a lot of other- Hold on. I just need to be really clear, and I'm going to focus on this. I think I've said this in the past. Hopefully. If I've got a clip, I am, but it, it should be obvious, okay? Unless you're a moron. Saying that somebody sounds like Hitler isn't bad in and of itself, especially if they sound like Hitler. Saying that somebody sounds like Hitler is bad when they don't sound like Hitler, okay? So if somebody says, you calling Trump X, Y, and Z over and over again and making these claims, okay, is going to lead people to having uh, violent thoughts or bad thoughts, the problem isn't the person saying the things. The problem is, well, is the person that they're saying things about doing those things? Like, it's, it's worse for Donald Trump to act like a Hitler than for somebody else to uh, to act like a, a dictator or Hitler, um, then for somebody else to call him a dictator or to call him Hitler, right? Just as a thing. Not to say that he's Hitler, um, or at least not the 1940s version of Hitler, but... The public figures talking about Trump. Yeah, I saw it on Monday. Let's just put it. What would you consider to be the strongest argument defending it on the conservative side? Perhaps the legal theory argument? No, there are no strong arguments. There, it's not... We, I, we can steal man... The steel manning of... The problem is that the steel man January 6th, you're steel manning it as a coup. That's what you have to do. For January 6th, the steel man is enough people around the country are trying to steal the election. The judicial system has failed because the deep state has infiltrated that far. And in Congress, Mike Pence won't help us save the country because he won't do what's necessary. Therefore, we have to take matters into our own hands. Our country is lost and only we can save it and we're gonna do it using extra legal means. That's the steelman. The steelman is that you, um, yeah, the steelman is, is arguing in favor of a coup. That's what you have to do, I think. Mash up of a lot of other public figures talking about Trump. Yeah, I saw it on Monday. Let's just play it again for viewers who may not see it. Many are openly comparing Donald Trump to Adolf Hitler. Trump's been compared to the German dictator by some throughout his presidential campaign. Is Donald Trump really a Fascist? Maria Chappelle Nadal posted this picture to Twitter yesterday. It appears to compare Donald Trump to Hitler. Former President Trump doubles down on a phrase many say he borrowed from Hitler. President Fantasyland decided to take a page out of Adolf Hitler's playbook last week. Yes, Donald Trump took his Hitler cosplay to the next level. Do you want to clear the air because you think you're being unfavorably compared to Donald Trump? A unified Reich? That's Hitler's language. That's not a... One thing I'll say also, and this goes into what I was complaining about before, um, especially with Israel-Palestine stuff, and, I, and I've complained about this a lot, um, really even outside of Israel-Palestine, is let's assume that the actions that somebody's taking, like how bad are the actions? Let's say that we put the actions in red, okay? These are the bad actions that somebody's taking, all right? Now let's put what I would argue is far left or progressive rhetoric. Um, we're gonna put that at orange, okay? <clears throat> And then let's say that our rhetoric is at, um, let's say that our, oh, also, by the way, you're seeing this happen right now in real time. Let's say that our rhetoric is, uh, is, is uh, blue, okay? <clears throat> so you have a guy who's taking, you know, kind of bad actions, and you try to make your rhetoric match the actions, okay? Ideally, this is what's kind of happening, right? Maybe, you're, maybe you exaggerate like a little bit, but ideally your rhetoric is matching, like, okay, they're doing this, and I'm saying they're doing this, right? This is like the ideal. The issue that you run into is when you're criticizing, so we'll say, let's say that the red is, uh, we'll say this is Trump's behavior. Um, we'll say that the blue is, uh, we'll say it's destiny's criticisms. And let's say that the orange is, uh, we'll call this the far left, okay? <clears throat> so remember a long time ago when people like Vosh were saying trans genocide, trans genocide, trans genocide, um, over and over and over again, okay? And I'm like, bro, there's not a trans genocide. Or people like Brianna Joy Gray, you know, or, or it was a girl, it was either her or somebody on with her were saying things like, oh, you think that trans rights are bad in Palestine? Have you tried being in Texas, right? Um, when these people have turned the rhetoric up this high, there's a couple issues that happen. One is, if we're the blue guy, if we go out and we argue, well, lefties are gonna attack us because lefties are saying, hey, Look at the distance between what you're saying and what I'm saying, 
okay? You're basically giving cover to this guy. You're not calling out Israel for being genocidal. You're not calling out the, uh, the Republicans for wanting to genocide trans people. You're not calling out um, the Republicans for trying to be white supremacists, for cops for wanting to kill all black people. Well, look at you, right? So now you've got to fight with the left, which is annoying. But then it's also annoying now because when you fight with the right, all you can do is you can either say, hey, listen, okay? Because when you fight with the right, they're gonna say, well, look at what you're saying. Well, you gotta go, hold on, I'm not saying that. I don't say that stuff, okay? Um, I don't say this stuff. So you've gotta disavow the, everything that the left is saying. So you're disavowing that. And then you're trying to give your position. But in reality, right, if the criticism is up here and then your, your, your criticism is down here, it's more accurately mapped on, and then the person you're talking to, we'll say like a Tim Pool, let's say that their criticisms are like here, okay? They view you ideologically as being closer to them than the, than the far left. So they view you as an ally. They use you to attack this position over here while you have like some criticisms that go, well, he said he's a little bit more anti-Trump than I'd like, but he's fair, right? That's what they mean and that's what they say. So this is like the area that I've kind of lived in for a while where I'm trying to map my criticism on directly, but now I have to fight at the left because these guys are fucking insane. And then when I go on to conservative shows, they're like, oh, Destiny's a reasonable guy because my position appears to be closer to them, even though I am very critical of their candidate, but I'm not as crazy as the far left. But then what happens is, is as, um, but the problem is that you were on the bottom and then jumped up to where Trump is, so they whiplash. You're, that is not true. That is absolutely not true. You are delusional if you think that. Well, you're not delusional. You're just retarded if you think that i've always been critical the problem is that now and this is where we're now we've hit i think this point okay where my rhetoric is actually getting very very close now or in some cases it's crossed over to where um vosh and hassan were okay now these guys are saying oh look destiny shown his true colors that's what um, tim pool said to pretend that i've always been this line because now we do seem to be closer. So now you've got the conservatives, and this is why you're seeing the flip right now. The conservatives are like, oh, look, they've shown their true colors. Destiny's always been like this. He's always been like, no, hold on. I've been following this line the whole time. You guys have just gotten progressively more insane, okay? Um, I'll call this like Tim Pool or like centrists or whatever the f conservatives really. Um, and then you're seeing people like Vosh and Hassan and everybody who are like, oh, wow, or no, I don't know if Hassan says this, but like Vosh is like, yeah, Destiny is like really on point now. And it's like, okay, well, hold on. You. And, and some of these people are like, oh, well, now you're finally realizing. No, hold on. No, no, no. I'm not finally realizing, okay? My rhetoric has, in my opinion at least, I've tried to keep it pretty close the entire time to where the actions of the administration have been. And I've said over and over and over again, Pisco kind of brought this up as an argument against me, but I feel like it worked as an argument in favor of me. Pisco was like, well, hey, remember, you didn't want to say originally that it was an insurrection. And I was like, no, I didn't. That's right. But my mind slowly changed as more information came out, right? Like, for instance, with J6 and insurrection, it kind of seemed like a bunch of protesters there that were rioting. Like, I feel like there needs to be some coordination for it. Okay, well, um, eventually the indictments came out for the Proud Boys. Like, okay, well, fine, there were a few guys there. That pushes me a little bit more. Then more information came out that at least 5% of the people there were with, um, were with organized groups. Like, okay, that, that was enough to move me over into the insurrection camp. And then more information came out with the indictments in the J6 committee, where it seems like Trump was trying to, like, coordinate. So I was like, oh, okay, now I'm fully on board, right? But my rhetoric the whole time is trying to to match like what I think is about going on, but because the left have yanked this chain so much, I'm always fighting them, so f them, okay? And I heard Vosh gave a very nice coverage of um, my recent fighting. F Vosh, you're just as bad, you're just as bad. If the Republic fails and dies because of these conservative insurrectionists supporting treasonous, anti-American, anti-patriotic um, foreigner terrorists, okay, that are more of a threat to this country than any Mexican, Venezuelan, or Muslim immigrant could ever dream of being, okay, if the Republic dies because of that, they're just as responsible, okay? You are just as responsible because the entire time you refused to give a reasonable critique, and while I'm sitting here fighting all of these conservatives, I have to disavow every single thing that my side says constantly because you guys can only live up here. You can only live up here. There is no reasonable critique to be made of conservatives because they're always genocidal, they're always white supremacists, they're always pro-apartheid, they're always doing, and it's like the most thing ever. It's the most everything ever, it's always the most, it's always the highest term, the worst thing you could say, it's always a genocide, it's always a whatever. And now, because now we're here, I think we're here now, or we've passed here. Um, Trump is a fascist and he is um, imbuing institutions with the power to enable his fascism. And now we're starting to get a series of Supreme Court rulings that look a lot like fascism. And if I say that, now I have the impression of always being along this line. 
but I'm not. I've never been along this line. I've always avoided being on this line. And I spent, also, here's another thing too, okay? When I talk about like building up credibility and stuff, um, credibility is, is built painstakingly and with the wrong person is lost instantaneously, okay? So keep in mind that I have built up this credibility with conservative audiences for years. For years, I've been the left guy that was banned on Twitch for having good pay, uh, takes on trans people. I've been the guy that was departnered on Twitch for having fair takes on Rittenhouse. Um, I've been the guy who's been fighting against extreme lefties for all this time, okay? But now I gave a take on like, listen, if you go to an insurrectionist rally and something happens to you, like, damn, you want me to be, I'm not gonna feel bad for that, what do you want me to say? Now, imagine if I say the same thing about how many times, for instance, um, how many times have I said that it's cringe for like the George Floyd worship, right? He seemed like a guy who was committing a crime and he got killed, okay? He shouldn't have died. It's tragic that he died. It's sad that he died, but I'm not gonna see her worship the dude. Um, same way with like people pretending this guy was like, oh, he was there to like save and dive and protect his family. Like, really? I don't even know if I believe that, okay? I've heard these shots. These shots happened in like, it was like one second, okay? All these shots happened. Like, I, I don't even know if that's true, right? But like, but now because of that opinion, right? Which admittedly, it's pretty edgy. I don't take that. It's fine. It's an edgy opinion. But now I'm like, oh, he's always been like the far extreme left. After all the crazy shit you motherfuckers have said, after all the insane shit, no, that's unhinged and that's wild, okay? But basically, yeah, it's like all of the, um, all of the virtue signaling is like so destructive because while, while Donald Trump's behavior is here, right? My criticism is here and I am going on right-leaning shows because left-leaning people won't talk to me. And when I go on the right-leaning show, I have to fight against this left-leaning perception. I'm not, they, these guys are crazy. But when I'm saying these guys are crazy, I'm talking to these right-leaning guys who are also crazy, but I have to disavow these left-leaning people. Otherwise, these right-leaning people don't give me any credibility. And then they say, oh, well, that seems like a little bit crazy too. Even though I think you're both about as fucking crazy as each other, right? But your, your beliefs are actually more harmful, right? Um, the left is crazy because they're like too big on like say affirmative action or DEI. Uh, you guys don't believe in vaccines anymore. <laughs> Uh, it's not even close to the same thing. But yeah, anyway, this is like, this is just kind of like an explanation. So when you see people going unhinged over the past few days, and they'll continue to go unhinged, I think that this is basically what's happening. This is what you're seeing. <clears throat> um... Wouldn't the smarter play be to use the soft part influence you had over the real, not pretend center right to try and erode the portion of Trump's base? No, because you've heard me give this complaint. Also, keep in mind, all the, remember, my thought process has been totally in the open for my entire streaming career. And if you've been paying attention, I think you've been watching me have these thoughts over and over again. What has my big issue been over the past several months? I think I even talked to Pisco about it, where I asked Pisco, how do you not hate people on the right? Because I feel like I'm running into a point, even where I debate Rob, and Rob is a hard one for me, because Rob Nor seems like a genuinely kind-hearted individual. And my parents, I think, are genuinely super kind-hearted, loving people, right? How do I reconcile the fact that I think they have beliefs that are destroying this country, um, despite the fact that they seem like decent people, right? These are issues that I've been, um, these are issues that I've been like working on and wrestling with for a, a period of time. Um, and then, um, oh, f it was one of the huge parts of this. Fuck. What do you want in it? I've got five minutes. I got so much shit to do today. What do you want today? Hello. Hello. Um, yeah. If you have five minutes that I'm not going to be here <laughs> because what I want to say will not take five minutes. What is it over? Uh, it's about your new epic arc obviously oh yeah okay come talk to me tomorrow i'm working on stuff and we can talk about it if you want yeah 100 percent, i will yes bye okay bye. i love you bye <laughs> bye love you too um oh i'm sorry okay i do remember thank you okay so one was like dealing with like, like well, how do we deal with conservatives i feel like even if some of them are nice people and i'm like getting along with them which i do and i get along with all these people because i'm not autistic i'm a very friendly person in real life so despite what you see these aspie um these aspie politically partisan hack saying like donut operator and all these other fucking losers okay i do get along really well with all these people and they liked having me there and they laughed at my jokes and they thought i was funny and friendly and all these guys okay had fun with me all right if they say otherwise okay i know they had fun with me um so that's an issue that i've been wrestling with and then the second issue was 
Um, the second issue was me complaining over and over and over again that every single time I go on these shows and I have conversations, all of the comments are, wow, it sure is nice that we are able to have good conversations with each other. So I, I don't know how many months ago I started to point out how annoying this was to me. This happened some number of months ago where I pointed out like, man, this is, uh, this is really, really, really obnoxious. But I don't think it was just obnoxious. I'm sorry, I have to bring this up again. <clears throat> when somebody says, wow, this has been such a nice conversation, I think that what they're actually saying is, is wow, destiny, this blue line, oh, this is what's happening. I just realized this, was, I know what's happening now. Fuck. I should have drawn this out earlier. I think it would have helped me a little bit. I think what I'm doing is, also, people don't, people don't think about this cognitively. Like, it's not like a whole thing that they're going through. This is just happening intuitively. I think what's happening is, is I'm fooling people into shrinking the Overton window of what they think acceptable political thought is. Here is the Overton window that I think is acceptable, okay? Let's say that the red line maps onto true behavior, and let's say that the blue line maps onto like some accurate um, summary of what's going on, okay? This would be like the boundaries, I'll do it in purple, of what I would think is like acceptable, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm putting myself in the center for argument's sake, but it can be anything, right? That like, there's gonna be plenty of room on both sides to disagree with me. Hold on. There's gonna be plenty of room on both sides to disagree with me, that's fine. I don't expect to have the correct opinion on everything except for movies and food. Um, I don't expect that I always get everything right. I don't expect to be free from biases or even accurately identify biases all the time. I might be incorrect on a lot of things, okay? This is what I think the accurate conversation should be, right? Now the issue I have is that people on the very far left are way outside the bounds, okay? You cannot be saying that trans people in Texas and Florida are more at risk than like trans people in the Middle East. That's unhinged, you're delusional. You can't be saying things like every single cop is, is like a murderer of black people. All cops are white supremacists, okay? That's just unhinged, it's not true. It doesn't match the data at all. But conversely on the right, you can't be saying that like George Soros and Bill Gates are working together to poison you with vaccines. That's unhinged. You can't be saying polio vaccines aren't trustworthy anymore. You can't be saying that like Ukraine has bioweapons labs um, that uh, are being funded to ship Wuhan viruses around the fucking world, okay? So this is what I think where I think that the, um, the overall, I'll call this like an Overton window of political opinion. But the reason why when I go into shows, people say, um, the reason why when I go into shows, people say like, oh, Destiny's having such a good conversation is because in their mind, this is what they think I'm shifting the Overton window to. They think that I'm shifting the Overton window to, to where I'm representing the most valid far left opinion. The host is representing like, a, like either a far right or a center right opinion and that the actual truth is maybe Destiny makes some good points and it's like a little bit closer to where Destiny's position is. I think that's what's happening when they say, wow, this has been a good conversation. Is they think that I think that the acceptable window is here, not realizing that no, where you think the truth is, I still think is fucking deranged. It's not even close to what I would, I wouldn't even put this in, what, where you're imagining the center is between me me and your content creator, where you imagine the center is, is out, even the center is outside the bounds of what I would consider to be a politically acceptable opinion. It's outside of the bounds. The person I'm talking to is way outside the bounds, but even the middle of us is outside the bounds. But I think that's what's been happening. I think that people are seeing me talk to people because I'm reasonable. They think I represent the most reasonable far left person and that their person represents somebody who's like kind of center right, but not completely far right, and that the truth is somewhere in the, in the middle of both of us. Yeah, that's, um, that's, my, that's what I think has been happening. But um, fuck that. So when somebody says, don't you think you should be going on their shows and like helping, no, bullshit. Because whatever movement they might be doing, it's, it's around irrelevant issues and it's not even close to being far enough, and it's misrepresenting the total um, breadth of available occupiable political spaces. Um, and I don't think it's even, yeah, I don't think it's moving people enough. It's just, it's making people more endearing to me, endearing to me, making me more endearing to them. Um, and that's it, I think, yeah. But when you drew that line where their positions were, even you conceded that you probably moved them towards your side, that's still good, no? Does that not make it worth it? No, because I think that um, rather than looking at these as like a uni, a univariate thing. I think we have to look at it like a, like a vector, okay? There's two dimensions at play, I think. 
Um, I think there are multiple. I think there are multiple. I'll, I'll, right now, I'll identify. I'll say there are two dimensions at play when it comes to an opinion. I don't know if a bar, if like a normal graph like this, is the best way. Um, we'll try. I'll try. Let's say that the let's say that what is true is um let's say that this green line is true. Yeah, let's say that the green line represents one this is 100% factual accuracy, okay? Um So we're going to mark this as truth. Wait, I don't know if I'm doing this. I think that I feel like there's going to be a better graph for this. We'll see. Basically what I'm saying is I feel like if I talk to somebody they have, let's say they have low conviction and low knowledge right here. I think my goal would be, um, I think that, wait, hold on, wait, no, no, wait, this can work. Hold on, I gotta think about this. But I think this can work. We're gonna do this. In an ideal world, your conviction and your knowledge will always match, okay? So in an ideal world, as you learn stuff, I think this is what you would hope to see, okay? I think you wanna see your, like let's say you have very low knowledge, but you also have very low conviction. Wait, fill this in. Yeah, we have very low, very low knowledge, very low conviction. Wait, make this. There it is. And as we gain more knowledge, our conviction grows until eventually, hopefully, we learn like almost entirely the truth of a particular thing. And then we have very, very high knowledge and we have very high, um, we've got very high conviction, right? So hopefully, as we get closer and closer to the truth, hopefully our conviction grows and the knowledge that we have um, grows until eventually we, we understand more or less what's true and then we've got very high conviction for our beliefs, right? Um, we'll say uh, approximately. Right. Um, I think that an issue that um, you run into, so uh, like when we talk about like people that are Dunning Kruger, like a Dunning Kruger person is somebody that would be either here, if we believe Dunning Kruger to be true, which there's a lot of reasons to to doubt it. But so like a Dunning Kruger might be somebody that has very 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 high knowledge of a particular thing, but because they have so much knowledge and they know how much there is to know, they're underestimating it, so they have much lower conviction than they should, or it's somebody that has very, very, very high conviction here, but they have very, very, very little knowledge. So they've learned a little bit about a thing maybe, maybe they've gotten a little bit of information about it, but they have very high conviction about their belief, right? Okay, so let's say theoretically, I think that, I think that there's a type of conviction that can build, um, I don't know why screenshot is crashing or freezing. Refresh, it doesn't refresh either. Oh, here you go try this. Um, I think that there's a type of conviction that you can build where you, have you ever heard somebody say, I look at a variety of news sources? Um, when somebody says, wait, how is the left red dot Dunning-Kruger? Can you explain or give an example of that type of person? When people talk about Dunning-Kruger, people will talk about how people with very little information will dramatically overestimate their competency, or they'll say that people that have a lot of information will underestimate their competency. Um, the example that I always give of this, I think, is like people that speak foreign languages. That if you ask a person, hey, how well is your Spanish? And they took like Spanish four in high school, like 20 years ago, they're like, I know quite a bit of Spanish. It's pretty good, right? But it's not very good. It's kind of dog shit, actually. They're, barely, they're not even really conversationally fluent, right? Or um, you'll have somebody like my mom, who, right? I'll ask her, mom, how good is your Spanish? She'll be like, ooh, not very good at all. Like I barely, and my mom is fluent in Spanish, but she'll say that because she doesn't know like all the politics terms or something, or she can't speak to like a scientist, but she's, she's conversationally fluent. She, it's her native tongue. Um, this is what, this is like both sides of kind of like Dunning Kruger, I think, right? Um, okay. I think there's a type of false conviction that can build when people talk about, uh, when, when people see multiple headlines, and this is one thing that I fix it on. It is one of my college speeches. I don't know if we ever spoke about this before. I think we have. And it has to do with passive information gathering versus uh, active information gathering. That anytime you're sitting in front of a feed that's giving you information, you are not doing research, okay? An algorithm is showing you what it thinks you're most likely to click on and click off of to remain on platform and to watch for as long as possible, okay? That's not research. 
So when somebody says, oh, well, I've seen a whole bunch of different, um, I've seen a whole bunch of different headlines and I, and, I, and I do get different media sources. When you say different media sources, what does that mean? Does that mean that you watch Joe Rogan go over a bunch of different media sources? Does that mean that on your YouTube feed or on your Twitter account, you see different headlines from different media sources, but it's still just headlines? Like you can be just as biased as any person that consumes media from a singular source. But now, because you've gotten like multiple headlines, now your conviction is growing and that's actually really scary. You're, you're developing like a false sense of conviction. Sorry, all of this to say, Somebody in chat asked me, before I went on this schizo ramble, somebody in my chat asked me, they said, Destiny, well, why, don't you say you're moving them a little bit closer to your position? Isn't that a good thing? The, the issue is that like, let's say that I considered these people, um, let's say that I consider these people here um, where they've got like high conviction, but low knowledge. Um, I'll put them, we'll put them right here, okay? We'll say they had high conviction, but low knowledge. Wait, how would I label them? Um, we'll, put, we'll make them orange. Okay, they're right here. Well, what I'm scared of is after listening to me speak, now that they've heard Destiny talk and they've heard somebody from the other side, well now, well hold on, I've heard that argument over there. It causes, maybe they learn a little bit more from me, but they get a lot of conviction, right? So I've moved this person here. Um, maybe that's a little bit too far, but <clears throat> when you ask me that question, well, aren't you happier that you moved them closer to your side? Not really, because I've moved them further away from this line, right? What you really wanna do is you wanna keep people on this line of conviction matching knowledge as much as possible. I don't wanna just get people closer to, the, um, closer to my position, I wanna get people closer to this line. So even though I would argue, well, look, you listened to me, you speak on this program, blah, 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 and now your knowledge grew a little bit, your conviction grew way more than your knowledge did. And as a result of that, what I've done is I've caused a greater divergence from this line by representing myself as like, a, oh, well, look, I'm the left-leaning person on this platform and I'm talking to you so you're getting a diversity of opinion. Um, so now you feel even more conviction of it. And maybe you did learn a couple of things, but it's like, it doesn't, not nothing significant. And now you're moving away, um, you're moving away from this line. That's what I mean to say. When I say, sorry, so all of this just to say, just because somebody has maybe moved a little bit, I don't know if that's necessarily good or not, if they feel like they've moved a little bit after giving a serious consideration of the other side when they really haven't. Okay, oof, all right. Hey Destiny, I'm a big fan. Uh, I feel like when you talked to, on Morgan the other day, you were talking out a lot on the right that are moderate. Twitter shows the worst and not the average. Um, Altcoin Andy, I've said this over and over again, and I guess I have to pair this with the rhetoric. I've said this over and over again. I've said that the far left is a problem and the far right is a problem. The far left is like one or 2% of the Democratic Party. The far right is like, 90% of the Republican Party. I say that over and over again, and nobody really listens or pays attention or whatever. I don't consider the majority of Republicans to be moderate right now. They're unhinged. The majority are. So if you're like a moderate Republican, you're like, well, I just kind of support Donald Trump. I don't care what you have to say about that. You're an extremist. You're, un you're anti-American. You're, you're unhinged. It's, there, is no, there is no moderate Trump supporter. That's not possible. Unless in exceedingly, no, no, there's not. There's not. There is no, there is no moderate Trump supporter. Um, that's what I want to communicate to you. And that's what I will work on as I work on this document. That's what I'm trying to communicate. There's no such thing as a moderate Trump supporter. That doesn't exist. You can't be moderate. You can't be a moderate Hitler supporter. You're not a moderate. Um, yeah, it's, it just doesn't work that way. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I completely understand your approach when you're dealing with people like Dave, but are you thinking of doing some alternate uh, debates with average people? Change my attention. Uh, maybe we'll see. I just came from New Zealand and not knowledgeable about US politics, but like learning from you. What outcomes will come from this manifesto? I just want people to have talking points. That's what I'm working on for. We'll do it. And this front page earlier this week, Trump is Hitler. According to the Washington Post, Trump has long- How is 50% of the population unhinged? How does this work? Because somehow, and I still haven't figured out how this is happening. I've been thinking about this so much over the past month or two, and this is like the next like stage or evolution of my thoughts. Somehow, Republicans are able to control the negative things that are said about them. I don't know how, I don't know how, I don't know where, how it comes from. Like they can't control what the left says about them in a way, but they can control how people perceive it and react to it. I don't know why or how, I don't know where that comes from. Um, so because they're able to control that so well, there are, there are some criticisms of conservatives that you can't make without people assuming that you're deranged or unhinged. And because there's no cultural pressure there, because there's no cultural shame or bullying, or there's no moderation, you have no moderating, no limiting principle on any of that unhinged belief, it can, it can grow like a cancer. 
and spread like a cancer because there's no way to con- you can't even touch it without Trump derangement syndrome. Uh, you're unhinged about Donald Trump, Russia Gate, uh, collusion, blah blah blah. Right? You can't even talk about it. But I don't know how they can do that. Like in the same breath, a conservative will tell you Russia Gate was a hoax. We can never talk about that again. And I can't believe they didn't do anything about Hillary. I want. I feel like okay. You know what we're actually going to do tonight too is we're going to buy a new computer. This. I don't know what's wrong. Earlier this week, Trump is Hitler. According to the Washington Post, Trump has long toyed with the language of fascists. Former President Donald Trump allegedly praised Adolf Hitler, saying the Nazi leader had, quote, done some good things. Now, many, with all due respect, that is all bullshit. Trump is not Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler murdered 12 million people, killing 6 million Jews in a Holocaust. There is no... I also don't like this talking point. I was going to push back on this on the show, but again, I have like no time to talk ever. This talking point is really stupid, right? Hitler didn't kill 6 million Jews, you know, in 1933 or whatever. I don't know. When the the fuck was the Enabling Act? Yeah. Hitler didn't kill people immediately. It took some time, bro. It was a whole decade, okay? At least of like rise to power. Like comparison to be made between Adolf Hitler and the Nazis and to Donald Trump, and to persistently make it, as you and many others on the left have done for years, since he first ran in 2016, I think has been part of the problem of the political discourse in America. If you keep calling a guy Hitler, it, is it completely insane to think that at some point somebody's going to say, well, in that case, if he really is the new Hitler... He's got to, now he's got to take it up. Well, stop acting like a dictator. If you don't want to be treated like a dictator, stop acting like a dictator. Come on, Mehdi, don't miss this. My mouse is not switching instantly to the other computer. Why? Oh, this is fucking annoying. Whatever. New computer time. Okay, we're, we're, I'll work on it. We've got to kill him. I mean, <clears throat> wouldn't you be the first to construct a moral argument that if somebody is literally the yeah. new Hitler right now on this planet, there is an absolute moral imperative, indeed duty, to kill that person? Otherwise, he's not the new Hitler. Okay. He can't be both. Let's- Let's unpack. There's a, there's a lot there, Piers. You said a lot there and played a very a long chunk. Let's respond to some of the things. First of all, you say that's all bullshit, you said playing that clip a moment ago. Um, that clip ended with Willy Geist of NBC reporting that Donald Trump said Hitler did some good things. Mm. How is that bullshit? That's what Donald Trump said. Because Why is if that you bullshit, read the Piers? whole context of what he actually said that day, it's a deliberately misconstrued... Yeah tiny part of, of what he said. It's not. It, it is actually. It's not. You go it's what John what, Kelly said. Well, it, hold, it, hold, it, on, it hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You've, you had a long question. Let me, okay, let me respond to you. Yeah. He also said, you quoted me on MSNBC. Yeah, yeah. I was t- responding to Trump literally quoting lines from Mein Kampf, poisoning the blood of this country. Piers, you're not a racist, I hope. You don't agree with saying that immigrants racist, are no. poisoning the blood of this but country. do you think he that is, is the new Hitler? That is a Nazi line. Hold on, that is a Nazi. That's not, no, no, I'm responding to you. You played a clip of me. So I'm going to talk about what I said. I stand by the line that Donald Trump is echoing the rhetoric of Adolf Hitler. Mm. He is. That's a fact. Donald Trump praised Hitler, according to his own Republican chief of staff. That is a fact. And stop saying the left calls him Hitler. You know who called him America's Hitler? His running mate, J.D. Vance, no, did, a Republican yeah. senator, no, called him America's Hitler. So, can I, so don't give this way, BS he was wrong this too. is the left. He was wrong too. Doesn't matter whether he was wrong. You're wrong to say it was the left. J.D. Vance called him. Well, no, you're wrong. You're wrong, Piers, because J.D. Vance is a Republican. He compared him to Hitler. People who have looked at what Trump and said has done, fascism experts, have said the guy is echoing fascist rhetoric. This is a guy, Piers, and I know you are the grandson of a British war hero who fought the Nazis. I know Captain Mark Oliver was a World War II hero who fought the Nazis. So I don't say this lightly when I say this. (laughs) Matthew Oliver, excuse me, war hero for our country. And yet today you're taking light of the fact that Donald Trump quotes Adolf Hitler. He praises Nazis at Charlottesville as very fine people. He hosts a Nazi Holocaust denier for dinner at his home. Did you condemn that? I mean, it's absurd. And by I the did way, condemn you that, say yeah. you're not right wing. I did condemn you, you that. Say you're, you say you're not right wing, Piers. And yet you give your right wing guests a pass. Ben Shapiro came on your show on Monday. Mm. You didn't ask him about calling Barack Obama a fascist. Did he, put a, did, he, did he incite violence against Barack Obama? Why didn't you I, I ask won't. Ben Shapiro? Why are you playing a clip of me on Trump, but you didn't play a clip of I, Shapiro Never mind, Barack Obama? Never mind Why? what interviews I've done with other people. What I'm curious about is, do you... Well, ex- I, I can't, well when you well, tell okay, me you're not right-wing, let me ask you're you, correct. Let me you ask you, tougher, do you, let me ask you, liberal do, and left guests. I'm many. Do you genuinely... Do you genuinely believe that Donald Trump is the new Hitler? Yes or no? No, I don't believe he's the new Hitler. I believe he's someone who quotes Hitler. Do you believe that he should have hosted a, a Holocaust-denying Hitler supporter at his home for dinner? No. I tweeted yes he no. shouldn't have done. 
So then why, why are you giving him a pass? Why are you always praising him on your show? Why don't you start every show I'm saying, not giving him a why pass. is a guy running for president who, yo, oh, come on, Piers, I've watched you for the last three days. You've been bathing him with praise. This is so just as a gotcha talking point, when people bring up Trump and Hitler, I would say there's no comparison. Hitler volunteered for his country in World War I, while Trump was a draft dodger. Nice. This is a guy who Are you confronting Burger tonight? Keem wants you to call in. If Keem wants me to, yeah, of course. Who, yo, that's why are you always praising him on your show at his home for dinner? No, I tweeted yes, you no. shouldn't have done. So then why, why are you giving him a pass? Why are you always praising him on your show? Why I'm, don't you start every show I'm saying, not giving him why a is pass. a guy running for president who, yo, come on, Piers, I've watched you for the last three days. You've been bathing him with oh. praise. Oh, wait, he almost said the thing. Why don't you start every single show talking about how a guy running for president is what? What was he going to say? Oh. A guy running for president who in the past, why are you always praising him on your show? Why don't you start every show I'm saying, not giving him why a is pass. a guy running for president who, yo, come on, Piers, I've watched you for the last three days. You've been bathing him with praise. This is a guy who hosts a Actually, Holocaust what been so home, no, hang on, hang Hitler, on, hang on. Praises Nazis, hang on. calls African countries shithole countries, okay. tells non-white women yeah, to go back many, to the countries they came from, don't, says don't, black people like me more because I got like, indicted. Don't misquote okay, me. You don't cover this stuff. Don't misquote so I just me. want to let your viewers know. If you want to know my views, about all the things you've just been saying. They're all there, public record. I'm a weekly columnist. I've condemned Trump for many, yeah. many things. On the weekly column? Is that a paper? Like an online publication? Or is that like a, sh like a YouTube show? But he is not the oh, new that's, Hitler. That's easy to well, do, but on, overall, finish you're still point. supporting him for Hitler. Let me point out point. You haven't called for him to stand down from Fine. the race. You called for Biden to stand down. I but don't not think a convicted Trump, criminal no, who I, praises Hitler. Well, we're going to come to Biden. Where he has a weekly column. How many people read his writing? We'll find common ground, I'm sure. But the point I've been making about Trump since the attempted it's assassination... It's standards that the I've problem, only made two points ground, about Trump, I'm Medi. sure we have common Medi, I've only made two points about Trump since the weekend. One, he showed incredible personal courage in the seconds after he was shot. To get this is such bullshit. He didn't show incredible courage. He was desperately looking for a photo opportunity. Why do, I don't like the rewriting on this. He saw the opportunity for an amazing photo op and he took it like crazy, like he does for his entire administration. Like he got photo ops with Kim. Like, he, he, like that's all he does. He looks for photo ops. He's, what do you mean incredible bravery? That's so cringe. I've only made two points about case. Trump. I'm Medi. sure we have common. Medi, I've only made two points about Trump <laughs> since the weekend. One, he showed incredible personal courage in the seconds after he was shot to get back up when you didn't know if there were still other shooters out there and to uh, show fair such enough. defiance. Okay, you may not think so, but I did, right? Secondly, no, I I'm saying fair enough. That literally means that's a fair point. Okay. And secondly, I, the only other point I've made is I genuinely think this is going to propel him back to the White House. It's not my... It's, I don't have a vote. That is not the only other point I don't point have a vote. Made, I haven't told anyone to vote for shows. Medi, you've got to let me finish That is not true, you've got to let That's too far, Dustin. You get shot, you're going to be thinking photo op? Yeah, it's entirely possible. What do you mean? Of course. Of course, that all, Trump's whole life is oriented around photo ops. Let me finish my sentence. Yes, no. You have to, you have to, as you would expect on your show, right? He, I believe he's going to win. I'm not telling people to vote for him. I can't vote for him. I just believe Donald Trump will now be the next president of the United States. You should interrupt this much. Well, Medi is a much larger British media figure than I am. I think a much larger media figure, period. So, and, um, and this is a one-on-one -on -one interview, so he has way more uh, room here to interrupt without it being super rude and without getting kicked off. Partly because of what happened last weekend and partly because of the decrepit and ridiculous and embarrassing state of the person he's up against, uh, Joe Biden. So when you say I've been praising Trump for three days, no, all I've said is I think he showed no. great personal courage and I think he's going to win the election. Those two things, by the way, I think are going also, to turn out also historically Piers. to be completely true. The average person ain't thinking about a photo op in that moment. Saying otherwise is willful ignorance. We're not talking about the average person, you f***ing retard. We're talking about Donald Trump, one of the ex-presidents of the United States of America. What do you mean, average person? What do you think? Who, nobody involved in this is an average person. What are you talking about? <clears throat> no, no, come on. You, that's incomplete. I watch both your shows Monday, Tuesday. People can go watch them. You have acted as if there's two sides to this, that the Democrats are guilty there of are. the same... You mentioned that you dislike conviction without research. However, when it comes to complex topics like Supreme Court decisions, is it better to read others' opinions or read primary source? Honest to God, my dude, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I would say that for something like that, I wouldn't expect an average person to read through whole opinions and get like a legal understanding. It seems like a lot of work for the average person to do. And that's just one like dimension of all the political shit you have to read. Uh, but I don't know if I've seen, I don't know if I found anybody who's summary. Actually, that's not true. We made that little list. I think that um, find channels that are good channels for legal analysis. I don't think I've ever seen Legal Eagle give a bad legal analysis before, where Legal Eagle is like read something and it's like, oof, this is really f up. I think almost everything I've seen him talk about um, 
the stuff that even stuff that I have like a lot of information about seems to be pretty on the money for everything. Legal Eagle seems to be very, 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 very good. Excitement there and are. violence. That, well, there's not. I'm sorry. All right, let's play I've a game. I've literally just I'll played a bunch of people tr- calling him Hitler for the last eight Those years. Those are not. Ale- sorry. Well, no, you did it. Actually, you played a clip from Willie Geist accurately reporting that Trump said Trump, Hitler did No, I played things. many, many, wrong. many people. Let, hold on, hold on. I can play a few again hold if on, you like. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You sh- Piers, Piers, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris. You're giving Trump way too much credit. What the fuck just happened? And he was thinking, let me make sure that people see that I'm alive and I'm okay. He, he literally put his hand up and said, fight. He wanted, to, he wanted to be seen as like brave and a strong leader and everything else of course he's thinking about his image at that point i think that when you've been on camera as much as donald trump has when you've been on camera as much as i have your everything is being filtered through like oh my god like this has happened to me at several points in my life where i'm like fuck how is this gonna look at this on video what's this gonna be like if this shows up here like what's gonna like you just you, you you're in that mode because every single thing you do gets analyzed and filtered through 50 million different channels and filters down through a ton of different pundits and opinions and newspapers and everything. you're always thinking about like what is this going to be perceived as mm. Uh, Hakeem Jeffries, Chuck Schumer, leadership of the Democratic Party. Mm. Can you play to me clips of them inciting violence in the same way as Donald Trump, Marjorie Taylor Greene, oh, uh, Ron DeSantis, why are you Paul Ghost? Why are you deflecting? Because you are deflecting, Piers. I'm not going to no, see no, him. Asking- you- because he was a strong leader in that moment? No, he wasn't. What do you mean, strong leader? If, any, if anything, if you want to say anything, now... I can't hear what he heard at the time. So it's possible he got the all clear from the Secret Service. Maybe. I don't know. Seconds after the shooting, maybe. But if anything, I would say he's a, he's, that's like a sign of a poor leader. Like, let's say that there was a second shooter. Okay. Well, now, because this guy wanted to come up and show everybody how tough and brave he is and he fist pumps and then he gets shot and killed. Wow. Great leadership. Like the fact that you think that a guy standing up, okay, after getting his ear clipped and going like, oh, fight. That's a strong leader. Like, shows how deranged and retarded you are. You, <laughs> you guys need to be bullied for this. You should be bullied. My God, f- actual f***ing retardation. Holy shit. He did, and the audio while he's on the ground, you hear the Secret Service saying, shoot her down. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. Both you, sides bullshit You tonight. might be conflating. This is a Republican Party. is a party Medi, of violence. you might be conflating Please, the two roles. I can see all day with you. Medi. Now you're cutting me off. Medi. Hold on, no, no, now you're cutting I'm me off. I'm just reminding you it's a question. I'm reminding you it's actually my show and I do the questions and you answer them. On yours, it's the let other way around. Let me answer the question then. Right. So let, Here's so my let question. me answer the question. Here's there my are question. not two sides. Do you, when you there say are not two sides When you say it's not two sides, but I've played you a bunch of clips of people repeatedly calling him Hitler, I say to you, there's the two sides. All right, so let me respond. Can I respond? Yep. Destiny is so removed from reality, it's wild. He says as he avoids the doctor not trusting vaccines anymore. Uh, Destiny is bathing in Trump derangement and TDR right now. What is TDR? Trump derangement (laughs) retardation right now? Yes. Every single time they criticize my guy, they're the ones that are being deranged. Every single time. uh, Every time they criticize my leader, it's because they're deranged. That must be the case. Every single time they criticize him, it's because they're biased. And and, and the judges are biased. And Congress is biased. And the other Republicans aren't real Republicans anymore. And even people like McCarthy and and even his ex, uh, all of his cabinet members. And and even the guy who who simped for him harder than any other person in his administration, William Barr, that doesn't back him. Even the fact that his old vice president disavows him. He has a new vice It's it's all those people. Like, bro, you're unhinged. Trump derangement, etc. Like, no, you're retarded my dude like you could not have any more warning flags on a guy than donald trump you couldn't have any more warning flags and you're like well actually um can i respond okay let me respond Donald Trump ran for office in 2016, telling uh, protesters rallies to punch people who pay their bills. As president, he played a clip of a guy saying the only good Democrat is a dead Democrat. He said to the Proud Boys, stand you back and stand again? by. He called Nazis at Charlottesville. Why are you no, let me again? finish. You're interrupting me, Piers. I need to finish my no, sentence as you get to question. finish yours. I'm on your show. I'm a guest. I'm answering. Let me get to I'm <laughs> pointing out that it's not two sides. What Donald Trump has said, I want your view. The more destiny spurgs out about Trump, the more I want to vote for him, LOL. Yeah, of course, because the only reason you're voting for Donald Trump is as a reaction to other people. You have no original thoughts, you have no policy positions, and you don't support him for any legitimate reason. You only do it because you think it's epic and based-pilled. That's it. That's the only reason. You never have to say that. We all know that. Every reasonable person in society is looking at you, and they know that, yeah, why would you say, I'm voting for Trump because I'm retarded, and there are retarded reasons that make me want to vote for Trump even more? We know. We all know. (laughs) Everybody knows, my dude. You're, You're not surprising anybody with that comment. You need to hear this because you're not telling them this. Trump spends his entire presidency inciting violence against Ilhan Omar, George Soros, multiple members of Congress, people of color, right? He left office 
right? Having incited an insurrection, which you condemned, he told them to go fight like hell. He told you, he said Mark Milley should be executed, the chairman of the What's Joint Chiefs of Staff. What's this got to do with my question? He mocked Paul Pelosi. I'm just, Mehdi, just say, let's stop pretending. Don't pretend that this issue is a two sides issue. Let's stop pretending that the problems on both sides are equal. That's what you need to say to bring this home. Okay, please. Getting to it, he mocked Paul Pelosi for being hammered in the head. He was MTG wrong to do that. That was outrageous. To be executed. It's, it's not about whether he... Crazy that Destiny only reads bad criticism. Uh, excuse me, goddamn hound. Uh, I don't know if you know who I am, but my name is Destiny. I'm an online content creator, and I've been on more adversarial shows than every single load slurper that you watch combined, okay? The idea that I only engage with bad criticism when it's your, okay, expanded asshole heroes uh, that are talking about, oh, I can't have Destiny on my fucking show anymore. He's too fucking extreme. Eat shit, loser. He was wrong, Pierce. I can give you dozens of actual violent quotes mm. from Donald Trump, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Paul Gossett. You can't give me those quotes. Can you quotes get back to my from question? Biden, Pelosi, Jeffries. No, I, answer my question. Where did Joe Biden no, say No, I've only asked good you a question. Mehdi. But it's not both sides, Pierce. You can't deflect, Pierce. The viewers you, are watching. Your side Where is literally Biden spent eight years calling him Hitler. It's ridiculous. Like, but that's the comparison. Trump acts like Hitler. Meanwhile, Trump, well. They're going to come after the Second Amendment. There's nothing you can do about that. Well, maybe the Second Amendment guys can. <laughs> Who knows? These are the same comment. No, no you can, we've already discussed the Hitler point. Where have they incited violence? Let me ask Where did you Biden this. say Let go me, kill please, people? You can't keep asking me questions. No, no, questions, please, I'm not letting this go. Sorry. What about the fact that also, you know what else is annoying? I wonder if he knows this. I do know this. You know why? Because I grew up a Republican. I grew up a hardcore Republican, Okay. For as much as we talk about Nazis today, and especially if you're younger, if you're Gen Z, if you're younger than like 22, I don't know if you're aware of this, but if you're a millennial, you had parents that grew up uh, who were either Gen X or boomers, probably mostly baby boomers, they grew up in something called the Cold War. And there is something across the United States, or really across the entire world, uh, a concept known as the Red Scare, which is where in our efforts to fight against communism, people had a lot of deranged ideas and a lot of fears about communists and communism. You might have seen a movie recently that came out called Oppenheimer, okay, that talks about this, okay, or, Oppen or Oppenheimer, I don't remember how you pronounce it. Uh, the idea, okay, that every single person around you could be a communist, OK, the idea that, um, you know, you had McCarthyism where he was I don't actually know the details of that, but I think he was trying to say that, like a whole bunch of people were communists got investigated and shit. Right. When we grew up, the worst insult that you could call somebody wasn't a Nazi. I'm trying to think or like they were like grammar Nazis, but Nazi wasn't really a thing. I don't think that Democrats ever called conservatives. Does anybody remember that growing up? Bush, George Bush is a Nazi. Generally, the big insults, although to be fair, also, I consumed conservative media. So maybe some liberal media was saying this, I just wasn't aware of it. But the big thing was conservatives calling Democrats commies. You commies. I listened to a lot of Rush Limbaugh, and he would constantly talk about the Chai Coms, Red China, the Soviets, um, the communists, communist Obama, communist Bill Clinton, the commies, the commie party, the demon rats, the demon cats, right? Commies, commies, commies. They talked about it relentlessly. Commie, uh, oh yeah, um, California, was that California? California? Did he say that word? He might have. The golden microphone of the EIB. Um, California. I think he did, I think he might have. But the, the other ones I remember more. Um, but yeah, so this idea that like now in 2024, well, hold on, we, can we call them Nazis? What if that makes people, bro, Conservatives have been calling Democrats communists for like 20 years. <laughs> well, did that never matter? Now today, maybe people don't care because communist isn't seen with the same type of like slanted negativity as it used to be, or it kind of is, but not really as much now Nazis in words. But like, bro, like Republicans have done this shit forever. Get the f*** out of here. Sorry, General Mark Milley. Damn it, Destiny. So close to unsubbing laughing face. Here, let me help you. Hide user from channel permanently. There you go. E? He called for his execution. Can you point to me to a single Democrat who's called for a Republican let me, execution? Let me ask I'll say, you I'll wait. I won't interrupt you. Let yeah, ask him. him. I'm waiting. I'm, yes. I'm, yes. British outbonger the bonger. Go. Who's called for a Republican let me, execution? Let me ask I'll say, you I'll again. wait. I won't interrupt you. Let me ask you. No, I'm waiting, I'm, Piers. I'm point me to a single questions, Democrat single one. who's called for an execution. Many, respectfully, you wanna, it's my show. I ask the questions. Now, listen. Answer me this. If he, is the, new, if he is the new Hitler, as so many people have been called. This is how, this is the Piers game and the Medi game too, because they're both in this like realm of like mind.
You just have to keep repeating the same question until the other person gets tired. <laughs> I was able to beat Piers at it a couple times, and then he beat me a few times. Oh, I think it's like him. I hope. Wait. Answer me this. If he is the new, if he is the new Hitler, as so many people have been calling him, would there be a moral yeah. justification in shooting him? You, you know what? He should make him ask. He should ask this question, make him answer this first. Or say, I'll answer, but you have to answer mine. If you thought the Democrats were legitimately trying to steal the election, that our, that our country is being stolen from us, and that even the top-level Democrats were involved, do you think that that would give somebody justification to kill people? You should ask him that. You should make him answer it first, because temporally, it happens first in time. You should make him answer that. Um, in the raw footage of the shooting, you can audibly hear Trump saying, wait, wait, after he's lifted up so that he can pose for the camera before being whisked away. You're correct. He absolutely was focused on optics. Oh, okay. I, 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 haven't, I haven't even listened to the full video of that. Of course not. I'm not someone who advocates violence, Piers. The Republicans are, but you never asked them about it because you're supportive Stop of the Stop deflecting, Mehdi. You like to Stick to your side. He said no. He said no. He said no. Above the fray. I'm not deflecting. I answered your question. Yes, he I did. Why would, you, why, would you, why would he claim that he's deflecting when he literally answered the question? He literally answered the question. Support violence. The only people who support violence in American... Who runs the Project Liberal Twitter account? Are you affiliated with them in some way? Uh, no, I'm not. I, it just popped up and I retweet them. Um, I think whoever runs it reached out, though. Uh, they emailed me. Oh, apparently he was a planner at a thing. Actually, I don't know if I want to, like, dox or reveal the guy. Um, but he says, we've connected briefly over the years. More recently, I... Oh, he was... Okay, he did this. Oh, I guess so then... Okay. But anyway, he reached out. He's seen you... Uh, he said, I'm reaching out because I've seen you engage with our stuff. Um, and we're a big fan. Uh, I'd love to chat, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then my response to this was, hey, yo, ah, uh, hmm. Uh, if you have any events or anything coming up like that, let me know. But I'm super wary working with anyone because people always end up being insane, smiley face. And that was my response. <laughs> and you seem cool on it, but so no, I don't work with any, um, I'm kind of like, I'll still do events, I think with Progressive Victory, at least through the election, I think maybe, I'm not sure where out on that, but I'm not like, I'm not affiliated with or working with any type of like political group or anything like that because I don't trust all these People are fucking wacky, wild people. I don't trust anybody, okay? Except PV seems to be pretty cool so far. I'm, they're doing their thing still. Um, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not trying to throw them under the bus or anything, but no, I'm not like associated or affiliated with anybody. In political culture are Marjorie Taylor Greene, Donald Trump, Paul Gosar, Ron DeSantis, mm. the governor of Montana who was convicted for assaulting a journalist, Trump praised him. Mm. Paul Pelosi was hammered by a guy who believed in the election lie, Trump praised him. I mean, this is insane, Piers. There's one side that is inciting violence, praising violence, mocking yes. violence. Yes. Mm. You have no problem with them. Yes. Instead, you obsess over journalists yes. reporting accurately. Yes. Actually, I Trump heard the president Hitler and praised Hitler. I, I read that the president of the United States only three days before Donald Trump was. Oh my God. Like this, he's going to do the bullseye comment. Seriously? What, like, do we have to eliminate all rhetoric that even remotely sounds like, okay, guys, we need to target battleground states. Excuse me? Target? Targeting? Really? What, with missiles? Battleground states? What, are you going to go fight to the death? Well, that's, I didn't mean, I'm so sorry. Okay, we need to focus on... Split states, okay? Um, I think we need to more aggressively go after voters. Aggressively go after? What, like you're stalking them in the f***ing street? What do you mean aggressively go after people? What, you want to hunt them down? Like, give, give me a f***ing break, dude. I wouldn't care if the other side doesn't like... What? I don't like to make... I should. I need to play these games more. I don't like it. There was apparently a... <laughs> The only, like, I personally don't care, and I don't think that this is, a, is as big of a deal, except you better f***ing believe that if Democrats were doing this to f***ing Joe Biden, or I'm sorry, if Democrats were doing this to Trump, he'll be losing their minds. Videos from the event show several people hitting and kicking and then beating a training dummy wearing a mask of President Biden. When the former chair of the Kansas Republican Party saw that, he was shocked. We can disagree. This video has 8,000 views. Nobody even gives a fuck, right? The expectations for conservatives is so fucking low, nobody even cares, right? Like if you were in a room with a conservative and the conservative said, shit, um, <laughs> I just shit myself. Like a person next to him be like, oh, shit, dude, do you want me to change your diaper? Like, hold on, like, give me one sec, I'll run outside. And like nobody would even question, I'd be like, oh yeah, of course. Like, yeah, obviously you 
himself. Like he probably wears diapers. Like we can grab some for him, right? The guy's 25, right? Like it's just like all standards of 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 behavior, of demeanor, of rhetoric, of of everything. It, they're through the the bar is in hell for conservatives. The bar is in hell. Agree with what also, yeah, that bullseye quote from Biden that was in a private call with donors. That wasn't during a campaign speech. Like, did, did, did Biden expect that the private call would get leaked and that some Antifa super soldier would hear those orders? It's like, oh, he, he said bullseye to the donors on the privately leaked call. We know what to do, Biden. Thank you, sir. Say no more. Shot. Said it's time to put him in the bullseye. If that's not violent oh, language, come on, what is? This is such bad faith. You know perfectly well Biden was not inciting violence. It's a figure of speech. He's already foolishly apologized ah, for it. Okay. You're so comparing every, that to calling for the time, execution of Mark Milley. So every time your side hold uses on, you, violent you, language, they don't mean it. But every time the other side he does, they do. Said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, my word. Pierce, come on. Marjorie Taylor Greene and Don this is Pierce is doing the same thing also that people do when they debate me or whatever, right? Like, wh where people will take a thing I've said, and it's like, obviously, this is not what I mean, right? Like, you're not a retard. Certainly, you know that... Um, like when I say like this guy needs to like we need to get this guy off YouTube. This is crazy. And somebody's like, oh, did you mean like kidnap him and kill him? Like people, I'm trying to think of a real example of where people will take like a quote from me. Oh, the apartheid Jim Crow thing was a good one. When Rabani in that debate, when he's like, you said that Jim Crow was an apartheid, and I was like, do you think that I support Jim Crow? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Wait, what? Like, I, you really can't understand what I'm saying that much? It's that confusing to navigate my. My, my words? My speech? Donald Trump called for their opponents to be executed. Did mm. Biden do that? I'll ask again. You, bought, you dodged it the first time. Ooh. Did Joe Biden do that? And you're obsessed with Hitler. Yes, Trump I'm obsessed Biden with Hitler, Hitler, Hitler because you and so many others keep calling so him Hitler. So why haven't you condemned Trump? Trump's new vice president called him Hitler. <laughs> Multiple times. <laughs> So does Trump. Trump called Biden the Gestapo just two months ago. Did you right. condemn him on this show? Right. Should yes people, no? okay, let me ask you this. Oh my should, God, it's like the rapid fire questioning back and forth. People, no, 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 did you hang condemn on, Trump? Hang on, Mehdi, I'm asking you a question. With Hitler. No, I'm sorry, asking you a question. Sorry, you've made this entire interview about Hitler. I'm asking did you, condemn you, Biden? Did I'm you condemn asking Trump you, for calling should, Biden the Gestapo? Should people on you, the left continue? Did you condemn Trump? Should, Mehdi, you didn't ask obviously. a question. Should people on the left continue to compare Donald Trump to Adolf Hitler? Yes or no? Should the right? Should He's, yeah, Mehdi is in the same world I'm at. Like, why are you asking me for sympathy? Why are you asking me to turn the temperature down? Like, what, what, like, we're all part of the same room. Okay, they've got their hand on the air conditioner just as much as we do, or the heater in this case. Like, what, what am I supposed to do? Should the right call Biden Hitler? Stop because deflecting, Mehdi! Oh, it's not deflecting, I'm pointing out your biases, Piers. I'm asking you a question You're about your Biden. side. Oh, my side is as long as Trump carries on praising Nazis, I'll point that out. I'm not going to. This show is called Piers Uncensored. But you want to stop me from criticizing Trump? No. Because a Republican shot I don't him want to stop you. Why do you say gun? that? No. Why do you say that? You just said, will you stop comparing him to Hitler? Yes. I'm only comparing him to Hitler because he talks like Hitler. So you if are comparing him to like Hitler. Oh, there we go. Amen, brother. Hitler, who killed 12 million people. Because he's quoting Hitler. No, I'm not. So you do think he's a new Hitler? childish. So you do it, think he's Hitler? No, I think he's. No, I don't. I already said no, Piers. This is very hard so to understand. So if he's not the new Hitler, he's not the new people, Hitler. If, but he's, Betty, if he's not the new Hitler, if he's not the new Hitler, bro, it's it's a political metaphor. It's a political. What, like, what do you want him to say? Like, okay, well, who are we not allowed to compare politicians to anymore? I guess Hitler is. It is pretty extreme, sure. But also, Trump's behavior is really extreme, right? Rob tried that too. Where he's like, these are novel charges for people that were involved in this. Yeah, this is a novel event. Like, people don't normally act like this. You can't act this far out of bounds of what is acceptable political discourse and expect people not to treat you like you're out of bounds of acceptable political discourse. Remember, and it's also, tr it's strange because Republicans want it both ways. They want Trump because he's like breaking all the paradigms and he's acting in ways that politicians have never acted before. But then they get compared when people treat him as somebody that's breaking the paradigms and acting in ways that people never acted before. Like, what do you want? Like, yeah, of course people are gonna treat him this way. If people stop calling him Hitler, yes or no? He's not the new Hitler, but he's quoting Hitler, so I'm going to ah. say he's quoting Hitler, and you can't censor me from saying that. Of course If I you can't. have a problem with the Hitler analogies, hold on, Piers, you do lots of interviews with Trump. Why don't you ask him to stop echoing Hitler instead of asking him softball questions? Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Okay, the bubbles have popped up. He's either going to say, he's either going to deny it. Well, actually, at the last interview I had, I asked him quite tough questions. 
or he's going to sidestep completely and either ask Mehdi a question or say, that's not relevant or stop both sides in it. I think he's going to do number two because I haven't seen his prior interviews. My guess is number two. Let's see. Pivot, or is he going to say, actually, I did ask Trump tough questions. Oh, well, actually, I didn't ask, ask softball questions. If you There it is. Okay, it's that one. Okay. What were the tough questions that he asked him, though? Go back and look at them. They were probably the did toughest Did you ask him to stop quoting did. Hitler? Sorry? Did you ask him to stop quoting Hitler? You seem did fascinated you with questions Hitler? I've asked other you asked people. Me. But yet you yourself don't want to because answer I worry these about Oh, and then, oh, so he did them both. Oh, he did, he did both of them. He did the, actually, I did ask him tough questions. I'm not going to say which ones. And then he's going to pivot and deflect. Oh, the twofer. About your double standards, Piers. What double standards? I worry standards? about your, imbi- your bias. I just pointed out to you. I don't ben have Shapiro a bias. came on your show. You didn't play him a clip. Can I finish? The- you asked me a question. You don't let me finish. <laughs> ben Shapiro came on your show. You said you all this. You did not play a clip of Ben Shapiro calling up. You said oh all this. Word. Can you finish one sentence? <laughs> ben, ben you done what Joe Biden show, did with Lester Holt. Of him calling a fascist. You've done what Joe no, Biden did with Lester Holt. Every time Lester Holt asked Biden a question. Actually, I wish... He deflected. Actually, I wish Joe Biden had been more aggressive. Destiny, you just described every possible response. It's like me saying the coin is either going to land on heads or tails and acting goaded because it landed on one of them, LOL. Wait, what? I said, he said, why didn't you ask Trump tougher questions? Okay. And then Pierce Morgan, I said, there were one of two responses he's probably going to have. He's either going to pivot completely or he's going to say, I did ask him tough questions. Okay. Those are two of the responses. There are other responses that he could have given that I would have considered better. So one could be, um, for instance, well, uh, the interview format that we did when we spoke last, it wasn't appropriate to ask him tough questions, right? That would be one example. So like, oh, well, you know, given, you know, what we were talking, it's not a, that wasn't an area for me to ask him tough questions. This is what Jon Stewart has said when he's interviewed people in the past, right? Oh, well, you know, I'm on a comedy show. Um, A second thing he could have said was, well, actually, I asked him a very tough question and then he could have given the example. You're saying I didn't ask Trump tough questions? Uh, I did ask him an incredibly tough question. Uh, I asked him about this, a thing that he normally never speaks about or people don't ask him about. But he didn't do that. He just vaguely alluded to saying, well, I do ask him tough questions. And then he starts to pivot after that instead of giving an example of a tough question. Um, another example he could have given is like, well, Trump won't come on my shows because I said I'm going to ask him tough questions. Uh, that's something he theoretically could have said. Uh, I, there are multiple, there are other things that he could have said. These are just like the two most obvious answers because he's nobody's going to admit to asking softball questions unless they've got a good reason like for instance an inappropriate forum or he's going to say well actually i did ask him tough questions but if you say you asked him tough questions you should probably give an example of that because medi's basically claiming the exact opposite um or you can pivot away because you don't want to address the question because you probably are playing too soft with the other side if, as i am with you and not put up with bullshit questions about bullseyes listen like i said you and i both agree joe biden should be way more aggressive and coherent well we're going so to come to joe biden, to biden. Um, we're going to come to joe biden in a moment but just to be crystal clear you have no problem with people on the left continuing to call trump adolf hitler or compare him to hitler i have no problem with republicans like jd vance calling donald trump hitler if he mm. talks like hitler no i have no problem with that and what about people on the left like including you I mean, I, I, I'll, should I not? Okay, Piers, I don't understand this question. If Donald Trump quotes Hitler, should I not say that? Should I censor I'm just myself saying, on if you, if you Like, that's such a clear and concise question. Please, Matty, please refocus on that. Please don't let him walk away from that. I don't think Pierre Prediction? I don't think Piers will answer that question. I don't think he can answer that question. Because that question only has one obvious answer. You ha- yeah, if Trump is quoting Hitler, then you should call him Hitler. <laughs> or you should at least bring out that he's quoting Hitler. That's the only way to answer that question. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say Pierce isn't going to answer it. I don't think he will. Let's see if he does. Trump, Hitler, if he mm. talks like Hitler, no, I have no problem with that. And what about people on the left, like, including you? I mean, I, I, I'll, should I not? Okay, Pierce, I don't understand this question. If Donald Trump quotes Hitler, should I not say that? Should I censor? Does he answer? Will he ever answer this question? I'm just saying, on if, you, if you genuinely believe... Please no, 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 ask no, no, again. You yes. need to be clear with your yes. question. Yes. I'm, I'm trying ask to ask you. Not, no, no, I need to know. I yes. need to understand your yes. question. Should I yes. not say to people that Donald Trump just quoted Hitler? Should I say... Answer. Oh, is he going to say yes? He's going to say yes, you should say it? He looks like he's about to nod. No. You better not say That's that. Not. Oh, wait, no. Oh, no, no. He's trying to pivot again. No, don't let him get away from it, Matty. Come on. I need to understand your question. Should I not say to people that Donald Trump just quoted Hitler? Should I say, no. You better not say That's that. That's not what I said. Calling him the new Hitler. Not what I said. I said, then what should I do? Should, should people on the left. Don't let him ask again. Re- no, no. Matty, don't let him wear you down. Don't let him wear you down. Matty, you've got just as much experience in this. I don't actually know who is, who's the longer pundit or whatever, but come on, Matty. Don't let him wear you down. Ask him again. Ask him again, Medi. Don't let him wear you down. Ask him again. To Hitler, in light of what happened no, to him don't listen. last Trump, weekend. Do you think no. that is part of the violent rhetoric? To, last which weekend not be is irrelevant, Piers. No, he he managed to he pushed him off it. Medi recenter. Medi recenter. No, Medi recenter. Yes. 
What's last weekend got to do with Trump's rhetoric? He was shot by why. a Republican registered because voter. Because if no. people genuinely get We don't told, know the motives. If people you, 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 you misled your that. viewers on I've Monday. Said that. You said you said, said he got that. shot because of the consequences of Biden's language. That's false, Piers. You should no, probably withdraw that. I said that. he was partly to blame. It's a false the, statement. If you read the column properly, you would know that I said that no, Biden... No, I'm reading what you said on air. Hang on. The guy Uh-oh. got shot because of the consequences of this kind of language. That's false. We don't no, know why he was shot. No, I said that the ratcheting up on all sides of violent rhetoric on all sides including by Biden, That's has not what played you said, a role Piers. in somebody deciding they want to kill Trump. Right? You don't because know that. You don't know that. He could be a crazy school shooter type. We have no idea why this guy shot at Trump. He mm-hmm. was a Trump supporter who shot at Trump. It's very confusing. We don't know why he did that. But would- Ooh, and then he says, but, and then he pivots again. Do you understand that if someone is described repeatedly as Adolf Hitler, that some deranged individual... Oh, Mehdi, this is your chance. Recenter, ask the question again. Oh ...might God. think it's morally justified to then kill the new Hitler. And that's why it's dangerous. So and that's why I should stop. So my colleague John Harwood is it? Okay, so hold on. First of all, he should stop. Donald Trump, not Joe Biden, called his opponent this Hitler. This is fantastic. Gestapo you deflect on Maybe every single. He, he, and Pierce is deflecting. It's funny because I think these guys both have a similar debate style, right? Because because Mehdi, Mehdi Hassan does this as well, right? Where he like kind of steamrolls through these questions. There's like an aggressive bonger interview style that like bongers are renowned for. I don't know why or where it comes from. But Mehdi is um, allowing peers to win with the style. It should be a stalemate right now. It should be Mehdi just asking the same question over and over again. Pierre is trying to deflect over and over and over again until whoever gives up first loses. But Mehdi is allowing himself to get led around. Stop. Donald Trump, not Joe Biden, called his opponent this Hitler is fantastic. Gestapo. What, what the fuck does Pierre want from Mehdi? He, Piers wants from Mehdi what every single conservative wants from every single liberal, which is every single time anything bad happens, if the contribution from the liberal side to that problem is at least 0.1%, you have to get down on your knees and you have to beg forgiveness from society, acting like you are 99% responsible for it. Every single time something bad happens, that's what conservatives want. They want you to bow down and they want you to beg for forgiveness. They want you to beg for forgiveness and pretend like you were the cause of the problem. Another really great example of this is Tim Pool played this game um, in the uh, in the shooting of the um, it was in the shooting of Club Q when uh, when there was that mass shooting. It was an LGBT club. Uh, this is during the time when Tim Pool and every other conservative was saying over and over and over and over again, "Well, they're groomers. People are grooming. What are you supposed to do when people are going to groom? You know, how are you supposed to stop the groomers? Like." It can't be the shooter's fault. It can't be conservatives' fault. It has to be gay people's fault for being gay, right? It seems that around 10 p.m., Club Q posted that they were having an all-ages drag show the next day. About two hours later, the shooter came in. People keep calling for wood chippers, and this is what happens. The grooming of children is not stopping. People are calling for more violence. Who, Tim? I do not think legislators will stop the grooming. People will not stop calling for violence, so you tell me what happens next, right? This is a mass shooting, right? This is a mass shooting. Like... Like, what, where, does, where does rhetoric like this get you, right? But after the shooting, who's supposed to beg for forgiveness? It has to be gay people have to get down and beg for forgiveness. We're so sorry for being gay. We're sorry for being, uh... Yeah, we shouldn't tolerate pedophiles grooming kids. Club Q had a grooming event. How do you prevent the violence and stop the grooming? I don't know, Tim. Say it, you fucking coward. Say it. Say something, right? But, like, yeah, I mean, like, these people will say shit like this, and then when an event happens, they go, Liberals, you need to apologize. Fuck that. I will never, I will never, ever, 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 ever apologize for anything in the same room as a conservative again until they have spent at least two minutes begging for forgiveness, okay? Begging for forgiveness for the crazy shit that they say and do. Fuck that. You should never apologize to a conservative for some political shit like this, ever. So you deflect on every single question I've asked you. Because you are so one-sided, Pierre, so I have to give some balance I'm to the show. I'm just asking, do you uh, think you people should stop calling him Hitler? Because obviously it's a ridiculous... And I've already said to you, when he stops... I promise, Pierce, let's do a deal. I promise, if Trump stops quoting and acting like Hitler mm. and quoting Hitler and praising Hitler and praising Nazis... Yes, recenter, and then ask him again, is it fair if he quotes Hitler to say that he's quoting Hitler? Just recenter and ask that again. I promise never to mention Hitler again. Deal? Mm. So, once again... He doesn't... He, Piers won't even agree to that. Piers knows that he can't touch this because it's a it's a kill shot question and it disin it uh it um detangles like so much of what he said before like like everything comes not detangles it unravels so much of what he said before um, he he can never engage on that point. Medi should realize this. 
it's hard to realize it in the heat of the moment. It's really hard to see it in a debate. Medi needs to lean in on this and ask over and over and over again. He needs to hammer this point home. You actually don't want to stop calling him Hitler, even though you know oh, it's wrong. once again, even once though you, again, know you don't wrong. want to engage with the rhetoric. This is like your new Hamas gotcha question. The substance of this, Piers, mm. is that Trump has praised Nazis at Charlottesville, mm. hosted a Nazi for dinner at his house, and quotes from Mein Kampf. Mm. You're telling me the great free speech champ. Can you imagine, can you imagine Can you imagine if Antifa got accused of doing some like extremist you fucking have demonstration and Biden were to come out and he were to tell Antifa, stand back and stand by? Repeatedly we criticized the, the vice president for not specifically calling out Antifa and other left-wing extremist right. groups. But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities as we do you think that the blm rioters do you think that they need to stand down right imagine biden no see i look antifa is not the problem i wouldn't denounce them i tell them to be patient and be prepared because we need people somebody willing to do something about white supremacists and the right and i'm telling you somebody has to because that's the real problem in this country it's a right-wing problem imagine if biden had said something like that right Imagine if Biden said something like saw that. Saw in Kenosha, and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do specifically that, do it? Well, I go would ahead, say sir. I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what are you? What are you, you look, what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call him? What do you want to call him? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and right like me to condemn? White Proud supremacists boys. and right Proud Proud boys. boys, stand back and stand by. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left because this is not a right his wing own, problem. This is, this is a left wing. This is a left wing problem. White supremacist. Antifa is an idea, not an organization. Oh, you got it. Not malicious. That's what oh, his really? it's an idea. FBI, his okay. FBI director Gentlemen, said. Well, that's true. <sighs> Fuck. Where is this Biden at? Then you know what? No, 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 we're, done, we're done, sir. Everybody, we're moving on to the next. We're moving on to the next. That's not an idea. Everybody Antifa in your administration tells you the truth is a bad, is a bad idea. Can I tell you what? You have no Antifa, ideas that are bad. Antifa is a dangerous, All right, radical gentlemen, group. Gentlemen, we're now moving on to the Trump and, and Biden records. And it ends with him condemning Antifa, right? Like, yeah, no, fuck. Fuck, I hate these people. God, I hate these people. It's so cringe. It's so cringe. And then these are the ones that are demanding you to beg for sympathy and to beg for forgiveness and to show sympathy. Fuck that shit. Fuck these people. <sighs> I should not be allowed to point that out because someone like you will say, I'm calling him Hitler. No, I'm pointing out facts, Piers. If you don't like facts, well, what's the line your friend Ben Shapiro says? Facts don't care about your feelings. They don't care about feelings at all. It's not about my feelings. It's about, I believe, the language on well, both sides. You're bothered. Saying Antifa is just an idea is disingenuous. There are many official cells. They're, by definition, no, there aren't an official cell of Antifa. Antifa is, is an idea. There are a lot of, like, some organized groups that might say that they're like, oh, yeah, like, we're Antifa or whatever. But Antifa is not like an organization like the Proud Boys is. There aren't just, like, random Proud Boys. The Proud Boys is like an actual organized group of people with, like, a leadership structure and you can open chapters and shit. Like, Antifa and the Proud Boys are not the same thing. The other people can, like, start groups and say, like, we're Antifa. The same thing they can, like, and say, like, oh, we're BLM. But it's not like an official organized thing like the Proud Boys are an official organized thing. Um... Now, there is there was a company called BLM, but they're, they call themselves BLM, but that's not like the movement BLM or whatever. About feelings at all. It's not about my feelings. It's about, I believe, the language on well, both sides. You're bothered by a comparison. I think the language you won't on both in the sides has to stop. And I think the left should stop calling him Hitler. You need to point, and you should point out to where Joe Biden has called for the execution of his opponents. Only one candidate running for president has called. Wait, Joe Biden? Did he misspeak there? Both the sides has it. to stop. And I think the left should stop calling him Hitler. You need to point, and you should point out to where Joe Biden has called for the execution of his opponents. Only one candidate running for president has called for the execution of his mm. opponents. You have not called that out. Let's, just end, just let's end on a point same. where I think we may, meet, the same. we may meet. He's just making the point, maybe, yeah. Some agreement. Joe Biden should not be the Democrat nominee, should he? <laughs> and then we move to this. No, I don't think Joe Biden should be the Democratic nominee. I don't think Donald Trump should be the Republican nominee. I wish we had two different nominees running for office, one on the Democratic side who was younger and more coherent and more energetic, and one on the Republican side who was less of a criminal and less of an authoritarian. Based. But you think that Kamala Harris 
helped by Nancy Pelosi is the answer. I would say Pelosi's showing yes. little sign of being any better than Biden in terms of her ability to construct a sentence. And is that true? I haven't seen anything of Pelosi recently. Wait, is that true? Does Pelosi have trouble speaking? Where's like a non teleprompter? Seeking a sky. Why do conservatives hate Pelosi? I never understood that. Um, <clears throat> it's so. He, I'm going to take you on a journey. I'm going to take you on a journey here. And I'm going to tell you that these threads are very loosely wound. So I could be completely wrong, okay? But I'm. I give like 45% conviction on this. Okay, so like fairly high, but like I could be wrong, okay? Traditionally, I believe that Republicans, Republicans, neocons, hated uh, people like Pelosi and people like the Clintons because they were incredibly effective at the game of politics. They hated these people. And they spent a huge chunk of their careers trying to demean, degrade, and attack them in order to try to damage the credibility of these people and all the political work that they were doing. Now, I think that was a huge impetus for the attacks on people like Pelosi and the Clintons early on. But now that you've got like a new Republican party that isn't Republican or conservative, and I don't think knows anything about what happened 20 years ago in this country, except for, I guess, maybe the older members, it's like warped into this kind of insane, um, it's warped into this like insane fucking hatred for them as like basically symbols of like democratic leadership, basically. Them being a women, uh, women might play into it as well. I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's just because they, they, they're like, you see these people as like the, the symbols of the Democratic Party. Um, Destiny, I thought it was because of the insider trading. I will never, ever, ever, ever in my life listen for a microsecond to a Republican who is supporting a billionaire for office who has never released his tax forms and who will not divest from his businesses while he leads this country with the largest uh, financial interests at stake of like any president ever in the history of all of the fucking country, okay? Fuck you, and I don't care. Uh, we, can get into a, we can get into a small room later on with just some Democrats. If you want to talk about insider trading, I would never take a conservative seriously in that belief. They clearly don't give a fuck. When they've deluded themselves into thinking that the billionaire TV star, New York City real estate mogul born with a silver spoon, Donald Trump, is the representative of the common man, no fucking shot. Am I listening to these people talk about insider trading? We literally have an insider in the White House. He is a billionaire who has businesses, who stands to make direct financial gains from the policies of the United States. Bullshit. Fuck that. A guy who staffs the government with his unqualified family members, by the way. Can you imagine if Hillary Clinton or um, if Bill Clinton was like had like a, I don't remember the names of their kids. I don't even know how old they were. If, if their children were like heading our the, like their Middle East, like, oh yeah, like how did Obama deal with Libya? Well, he let uh, he let I don't know the names of his kids. Like Samantha Obama deal with that. Like that's her. She takes point on that issue. Like, get the fuck out of here. <clears throat> Steven661, thanks for the 10 gifted memberships, buddy. Gaia, thank you very much, both of you, for joining us. Of course, Fetlana fled Belarus in 2020 after running against authoritarian leader Alexander Lukashenko in the presidential election and is widely thought to have won, despite Lukashenko declaring victory amid widespread reports of... Thank you both very much. NATO is a bulwark against tyranny. Uh, thank you both. And former Sigd. Can you imagine, Donald Trump, we need to talk to you about like an actual foreign policy event that's not just a major fucking war. Can you like have a conversation about it? I'm curious for the conservative dipshits here. Can you link me a single interview? I used to do this challenge during his presidency. Can you link me a single interview of Donald Trump sounding intelligent about any issue related to the office of the presidency? Can somebody link me any video of him uh, talking about like a foreign policy event with like some, it seems like, oh, wow, he's like pretty knowledgeable about this, where he's not just like giving slogans. Oh, I'll make peace because I'm Donald Trump and I'm strong. Like where he seems like he's speaking is like, oh, he seems like he actually has some, he seems pretty intelligent about this. Just a single video. All right. I'd love to see it. In his favor, sound familiar. Svetlana and former... Link me one of Biden, LOL. Did, what, weren't there like multiple reports of people saying that Biden literally just came out of like the United Nations and he gave like a pretty decent um, understanding of... Um, was it, was it uh, stuff related to China? Um, fuck, what, was, what were these articles? Biden performance, United Nations, NATO... 
five days ago. We had the Treasury Department do a study. When unions do better, everybody does better. <laughs> Holy shit, Dark Biden's got that dark voice. Does he speak um, news conference after NATO summit? I don't know if this has foreign policy in it. From the very beginning. Oh, he I got better. No bones about that. She is qualified to be president. It's that bait they are deflecting? Oh, true, actually. Fuck them. Speaker Pelosi are the co-authors of a new op-ed in the Washington Post entitled very much for joining us. Uh, Speaker Pelosi, I, I want to start with you on uh, President Biden first. Uh, um, depression among Democrats, the phone lines burning up, uh, concerned about his candidacy and whether or not he can win. And some even out loud are shaky at best. There was that time that Trump warned Germany slash Europe not to take Russian gas many years back. Yes, because that was a headline from like fucking Breitbart. Correct. T Donald Trump will repeat things, but it's only whatever he's heard from like Bannon or Fox and Friends or whatever like the current like talking point is. He never says something that sounds like he's actually put genuine thought into it or spoken about anything at length. Even that gas thing where he's like, oh, yeah, like I think that there definitely needs to be uh, like a heavy divestment from uh, Russian sources and we can assist them with these types of blah, blah, policies. It's just like, oh, don't take Russia. Gas. It's always just like one liner slogan things. Link me a video. I want to see it. Link me one video. Find me a uh, find me a video. Okay? Kamala Harris. I think would also get completely wiped away by Donald so, Trump. So to me, it seems to me the Democrats, so, so, the Democrats now cannot win. They've dug themselves into a terrible place where they look fractured well, and disunited. And the Republicans that's are united very, and ready to go. Like this, like he's not even speaking about the quality of the candidates. Like the Republicans are united and ready to go. The Democrats have dug themselves into a horrible place. Isn't that kind of the problem? Why have the Democrats dug themselves into a horrible place? Because they're so critical of their own candidate. Why are the Republicans united? Because Trump can literally do no wrong. Like, yeah, thanks, Piers. This is the issue. Piers, this is a United States of America, most polarized country in my lifetime. It's very, very tight because people are just partisans. On both sides, they'd vote for a corpse as their candidate. The latest polls show Trump up by two points. Uh, it's still a ridiculously close race. Obviously, Trump's got the edge. He's got momentum. Um, but here's why. Here's a, you're going to get annoyed at me again. Sorry, Piers. I've got to say this. Again, the bias in your question. You say Biden can't string a sentence together, nor can Trump. Trump doesn't speak in sentences, so he never has to worry about stringing them together. He just speaks in slogans. Do you never point that out? Oh, we can. That's what bothers me. Oh, we can, me. but that's where that, you're so wrong. Oh, we can. Oh, we can, Kenny. Okay. Oh, we can, um, Kenny. Me... I have watched him at a fan since 2016. I've always thought your takes were fair and grounded in reason. Keep applying uh, aggressive pressure on Republicans. They are the driving orchestrators of the violent temperatures and rhetoric tonight. Thanks, buddy. Yes, do, on Monday, do on one Monday thing, you got really worked up. Do one just... thing. Do one no, thing. No no, 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 let me finish and answer, Piers. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't feel good being on either end of it. Can I have one answer? Please. One answer. Trump cannot finish sentences. Mm -hmm. On Monday, you pointed out that he gets, uh, Biden gets people's names wrong. You don't point out that Trump gets even more people's names wrong. Last, year, last month, he said he passed a dementia test. He got the name of the doctor wrong instead of saying Ronnie Jackson. <laughs> oh, no. He said Ronnie Johnson. He's mm -hmm. confused Obama and Biden. He confused Nancy Pelosi and Nikki Haley. Oh, and He's and confused and Iraq and Syria. Yeah. He confused World War II with World War III. Piers is smiling. Okay, hold on. Wait, I know this. Hold on. I've seen through the matrix. Hold on. I see. I can see like the letters on the wall. So Piers is kind of like nodding along and going, mm-hmm. But then after Medi's, after Medi finishes, he's going to go, okay, but, and then he's going to bring up something completely unrelated. He's going to be like, okay, but the polls are showing that Biden is seen out or like, okay, but Biden is clearly like not even aware of where he's, it's going to be like an okay, but that's what's going to happen after this. He's not going to engage with what he's saying. That's my guess. Let's see. Nancy Pelosi and Nikki Haley has confused Iraq and Syria. Mm. He confused World War II with World War III. He's confused the leader of Turkey with the leader of uh, Hungary. He's mm. confused the leader of China with the leader of North Korea. He called Tim Cook Tim Apple, right? And he even got his own... Okay, but what about the facial expressions? Running mate's name wrong. He called J.D. Vance J.D. Mandel a couple mm. of years back. So Donald Trump gets way more names wrong. He's way more incoherent. He's way more ignorant. Okay, but... So, which one of you... Yes, which one of the two issues. of them... Which one Trump of the is two, much worse. Which one of the two of them would you, would you trust to drive you home? Home. Okay, never mind. I've, I've, I don't even know what. <laughs> I don't even know what. Okay. You surprised me. Okay. You did surprise me. Thank you. You got me there. You got me there. This, which but one Trump of the is two, much worse. Which one of the two of them would you, would you trust to drive you home? Like, it's the presidency. It's not a driving test. 
Which one of the two of them would I trust to drive me home? I don't yeah. give a damn. That's not the question. Which one of the which one of the two of them would I trust to run the country? Ah, good one, Medi. Nice job. We're linked up. We're synced, my brother. We are synced mentally. Thank you. I'm syncing with him in the past. I just had a Hodor moment. Okay. Yes. Without being a criminal or an autocrat or an ignoramus, Joe Biden, of course. Of course. Uh, well, I, that's where I disagree with you. I don't think John and Joe Biden can run a bath. And when it comes to driving me home, I take somebody. And, and you think, take and you think Donald Trump, the man who thinks. I take someone who has a face plant and you think on Donald stage, fall off his bike, and everything else that Biden has been doing. Again, you know, again. You know how bad. Wait, did he say fell off his bike? When's the last time you saw Trump ride a bike? I think Donald stage, Trump, the man. Fall off his bike. Hold on. Uh, and before he rides them all the time, and he's a prolific bike rider. Donald Trump riding bicycle. I'll never ride a bicycle. <laughs> oh, I'm serious. I hope he's okay. Fell off a bicycle. I make this pledge to you today. I will never, ever ride a bicycle. <laughs> Why would this be your go-to? <laughs> And everything else that Biden been doing, again, you know, again, you know how bad again, that, Biden is. Again. You know it in your heart. I do, but unlike I do, I do because unlike you, I'm not a partisan. I can say both of them You're have not mental a partisan. health issues. You won't say anything. <laughs> you won't say anything about Trump. You're ignoring the fact that Trump said we should use. Oh, I nukes criticize to stop Trump all the time. That you need. That you need. That you need not on, not on mental health. In fact, again, just in this show, you've just pointed out. Oh, I was Biden about to tell you what to do. Trump couldn't walk down a stage. Go and get. Trump couldn't walk off a stage without get, someone holding his hand. Go and get video of the two of them from ten years ago. I will play it in a split screen on your show oh, to now. Oh, no doubt. Play both no of them, doubt and you will see Trump is exactly the same as he was then, and Biden is not. End oh, of story. Oh, that. That's the best point. That's the best point you've ever made, Pierce. You're right. Ten years ago, Biden has deteriorated for ten years. Trump is the same as ten years ago. But the difference is Trump was mentally incompetent ten years ago. True. He was incoherent and mad. The bar is in hell. There is no way for him not to, to pass over it. Like ten years ago when he What are you gonna do, Medi, when he wins again? Stuff. What are you gonna do when he wins again? What, then he, what do you hold on. Wait, is Medi American or is he? British American progressive prop, but where does he live? He was born in England. He has dual citizenship. What a weird question. What are you going to do when Trump wins? I don't know. Continue living my life in England? Does he live in the United States? Where does he even live right now? I don't know, Piz. I'm hoping that people like you will stand up for free speech and democracy against an authoritarian who wants to fight the press and calls journalists The scum. enemy of the people. Oh, should... he, the media, the enemy of people, journalists. Come on, the biggest attacker of uh, the press. Oh, my God. Okay, hold on. What's he going to say? The biggest attacker of the press. Okay, hold on. Obama's coming to mind. Is it going to be... Is it going to be something to do with whistleblowers like Assange and Snowden? That's one way that it could go. Um... Did Biden do anything that, where there's a mean criticism of him about the freedom of the press? Is it going to be online censorship from progressives? I'm going to guess it's going to be. I don't. I, I don't. I haven't heard Pierce talk about this. My guess is going to be Snowden or Assange, and then he's going to blame like Obama and the Democrats for it. That's my guess. It could be social media, or it could be some third thing that I don't know about. Let's find out. Press in modern presidential oh, history was, was Barack Obama. Obama actually, with who, uh, Snowden. Was I, I never defended Barack Obama on that. As, as as you, and I was interested as earlier. You know, Piers, I know. There it is. We got all the way back to Obama. What is he, is he, Obama's not even running for president. And I think it was because of the, because of the Snowden and Chelsea Manning and then the Assange stuff. I was Barack interested Obama earlier because you were, ta you, were, you were talking about how Trump put people in cages and all this kind of thing. Unreal. Do you know who deported the most people? Oh, and the deporter in chief line, Barack Obama. What does that have to do with immigration? What does that have to do with any? We weren't even talking about immigration. American presidential history. Yes, Barack Obama and yeah. I called him out for a Do you know who time, also put lots stuff. of people in cages and separated families? Oh, that would do be you know, Obama. Do you do you know, why are we talking? Did Obama like make fun of Piers Morgan or something? Why does he have such a hate boner for Obama? Who who is the now? Most, hang on, on. finish yet. Do you know who dropped, the most, bomb, do you know who dropped no. the most bombs in a calendar year? Oh, Barack Obama. Do you know? I don't know if the bombing thing is true because didn't Donald Trump obscure bombs being dropped in Yemen? Or was that drone strikes? Didn't, didn't, didn't Donald Trump put a lid on the information that was coming out about that? It might have been because of the time period that even if he did cap it, Obama still clearly was involved in more um, 
military strikes as possible. I don't, I don't know the numbers for all of that, but who who ran illegal drone programs that killed thousands of innocent people? Oh, so, Barack Obama. Do you know who actually uh, campaigned in 0809 to so shut down is, to shut down Guantanamo Bay because, as a former lawyer, he knew it was an illegal torture chamber? Oh, it's still open. So I'm afraid, Mehdi, your re- he knew it was an illegal. In 0809 to so shut down is, to shut down Guantanamo Bay because, as a former lawyer, he knew it was an illegal torture chamber. Oh, it's still open. So I'm afraid, Mehdi, your revisionism. So this is the problem, Piers. So is Obama's not running for president, my dude. Saint Barack oh my against word. evil Donald doesn't quite cut it with me. This is. So this is the problem, Beers. Your question doesn't cut it with me because number one, I criticize Obama for all those things. And, Unlike you, I and, can criticize both yep, sides. Yeah, and and Obama's not running for president. That's the next one. You you say it. Say say it. That's, That's the next one. Hit him with that. You, you did it in that in that question you didn't. In that question you didn't. You just said Barack Obama increased drone strikes attacks. Mm. Trump actually escalated drone strikes over Obama. Trump supports Guantanamo. Trump wants to torture more people. And as for deportations, why don't you tell your viewers, one of the reasons we oppose Trump coming back, those of us with any sense, is because he wants to carry out the biggest deportation in history. Yeah. E- eject 11 million people. Well, the, biggest, violent, depo- well, disgusting well, well, the Ob- biggest deporter was Obama, though. Bring up the second point, that Obama's not running for president. Oh, ironically, we look, we right, don't 11 there, million the, people he wants to ironically, eject Ironically, the biggest deporter in history was Barack Obama who was a Democrat president. Anyway, Mehdi, we've got to leave it there. As oh. always, good to debate with you. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully get you back Thank on you. as we get near the election. Thank you.